But then I said to Lee, for God's sake, when I clench, pull it out, otherwise you would lose your hand. And he was like, that is not how you play whack-a-mole. Uh, oh, we're live. <laughs> it's, wait, yes, it is. <laughs> wait, Lee taught me how to play whack-a-mole as well. And I lost both hands. <laughs> Space. The <laughs> final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Adequate. Our ongoing mission until we are cancelled and replaced by something far superior. To review every episode and movie of Star Trek in existence. To seek out new guests and make them very uncomfortable. To boldly go where very many other Star Trek based YouTube shows have gone before. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, good morrow if you are in the future. Welcome to another episode of Trekking Up North. I am your host, <laughs> Captain Goodwill, and joining me, as ever, is the delectable Gysian from the planet Honk. 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 Science honk, officer. Sir? Science, would you like some honk? Can, how can would honk? You, honk, sir, or just a mint? Do you want a coffee? Maybe a bit of honk? Maybe turn a bit of a, turn honk. honk. Turn and honk. Really, there we go, because on, on the planet Honk, uh, it's actually all, all the food is referred to as honk. So basically, the the way you say it determines what the actual food is, and it it, it gets very confusing because you always end up like this is not the honk I ordered. I wanted the honk. Um, very difficult. The the honk sounds a bit German. Also, cannibalism is rife. Uh, I love how uh, absolutely like regretting her life choices Nina was there. <laughs> like as soon as the intro started, she was like. <laughs> it's that thing of can I can I uh, you know attempt a webcam malfunction? I'm, I'm having technical issues. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just shake it. Ah. But a nice segue because <laughs> joining us live from another part of the planet, she has released me from the radiator in her basement where I have been chained <laughs> for many weeks and ordered to review. You paid for that goodwill. You paid for that nonsense. The safety word is cowabunga. <laughs> The, uh -oh. the <laughs> hello, mother. The safety. <laughs> it, oh, it's hello, Mama Goodwill hello, Nina's watching. mother. Um, hello, Mama Goodwill. <laughs> she has released me from. Please release me from the radiator. Uh, from the basement. Fr she's I... released. Because <laughs> you've turned the fucking radiator on. That's why. No one ever talks about yeah. that, do they? They're always talking about chaining people to radiators, but that's going to get really uncomfortable in winter, isn't it? When the heater kicks in, like, what, what, what happens there? Yeah, exactly. You're just like, at least, surely, if you chain to the radiator, do you get access to the little dial that controls the temperature at the side? And you're like, mm, so what are you? what you're saying is, basically, if you chain me to the radiator, I will make you suffer through the cost of living crisis by turning yes. the heat on. <laughs> Damn it, <Yeah>. my bills! <laughs> <laughs> She is the queen of the Shuttlepod moderators. She is brutal. She is savage. She is feared from here to the Beta Antares system. It is Alina, or known as that woman who chained me to the radiator and is not letting me go until I tell her where the gold is. It's Nina! <laughs> Hello, Nina. Are you still terrified? Hi. Slightly. <laughs> Good. <laughs> We're just trying to make making jumping out of a plane a bit easier for you because you're like, oh well. You See, know. I was I was just gonna say I involuntarily volunteered once again for something. This. <laughs> we just added anyway. To that list of Thank regrets. you for having me. <laughs> that list, the list of regrets for the year. She is yeah. here. She is here to share our passion of Star Trek with us, and she is also here to share a review. Of Deep Space Nine, Season 2, Episode Blood Oath. But before we get to that, Nina is doing something quite reckless and quite crazy for charity. Would you like to talk us through it? Um, so I want to specify I involuntarily volunteered, and, and I, I will expand on that later on. But um, basically, I I live in a very small town. I've been living here for the past seven, eight months, something like this. And we have a very small but mighty rugby club. So basically, what are we going to do in a few months is 
jumping out of planes <laughs> 10,000 feet to raise money for our beloved rugby club to update the facilities. And, you know, now that our numbers are slowly increasing, well, we, you know, what, what, what better than just give those kids a place where they can actually train and maybe become, who knows, national rugby players. I don't know. Um, I I wasn't a massive fan of rugby a year ago, but since I got here, I've kind of fallen in love with the club with with the sport. The kid, um, I'm an au pair four plays. He's amazing, by the way. Oh. But um, yeah, I think uh, it's it's a brilliant uh, thing they're doing, and these lads really deserve it. So when I say I involuntarily volunteered, is I pretty much just went in the curiosity got the best out of me i just asked what the whole thing was about and about a couple of days ago i woke up being added to a group chat saying this date skydive and i was like oh i guess i'm <laughs> doing the skydive <laughs> did you do, did you leave it open-ended and you're like yes i'll do absolutely anything to help the club and they're like right oh See, but I... it's funny. It all started like I, I actually am their photographer. I, I do take I, I take pictures for them. So my participating with them out of the blue happened about five months ago. Like it all started five months ago. I have a question. I, I love for this you. so much that you're I, I, I do have a question mission. though. Have you hmm. asked them if there is a parachute? Yeah, the funding goes that far. Mm, yeah. Not yet. Right. <laughs> so... I, I would hope so. In the description below, everybody, is a link to Nina's GoFundMe for her to jump out of the plane. If you would like her to survive, please donate money so the rugby club can buy a parachute. If yeah, you don't I, donate... On. I'll set up a just giving to get Nina a parachute and then yes. hopefully that'll complete before the other one. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, Nina shall be enjoying a nice cup of splatter and we don't want that. <laughs> Um, because it's maybe we nightmare. could do a new one for a trampoline, just as a like a, a backup plan. Or the something. ultimate trampoline. <laughs> that would be an just amazing. Yeah, just well, yeah, they could probably be that. waiting with a blanket down, you know, waiting trying to catch me. I don't think the blanket's going to help. It's an option. <laughs> I, I literally can't. I would probably be sort of comfortable with death rather than trusting me and Goodwill running around like two clowns Whoa, with a why trampoline. Me? Yeah. Why me? <laughs> Why? Why is my? Why is Nina's life in my hands? No, no. It's in mine as well. It doesn't comfort anyone. But you I, know. I think we should get her a trampoline. <laughs> the the ultimate challenge would be jump out of the plane, land on the trampoline, bounce up into the air, and get back into the plane. That should be the <laughs> ultimate goal. If Nina, I love the idea. That would be the ultimate trick. Yeah. The instructor <laughs> just being like, "Oh, that's not happened again. That's not happened before." You know. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, okay, but it's funny. Like... You asked if there, you asked if there is going to be a parachute. I literally had someone ask if they can do, donate money for me to go higher than ten thousand feet. <laughs> I mean, they know who they are. Alan, that is in, ch <laughs> in the chat, and Mark in the chat, they know Alan, who it was because it was Ma. a friend of ours. Mark, you it was know a Mark. Than it this. was a friend. Hmm. Mark, I, it's I something Mark so would much. do. It's something <laughs> Mark would do. I mean, to 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 be fair, it doesn't work this time. That is so wonderful. So, can we donate by going to the GoFundMe link in the description? Yes. Down there. Yeah. Down there. Okay. And what we'll do uh, for the people who are listening back on this on that Spotify and whatnot, uh, we will Jeez. put the link in the description for the Spotify. We will. Well, our 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 Spotify wizards. And our audio wizards, when they do the description, make sure you take the GoFundMe page. It is right above hashtag candle slag, just so it's got. Are you we still attention. got that? We're not even doing a candle slag. Episode. No, no, no. This the is... description will it's always be candle. It's praise be to the koala <laughs> and candle slag. I know my tropes. I know my gimmicks. I am a man of a thousand them. gimmicks. I've got frosted this tips. Is... This is just a thing now, but no, uh, guess good luck with that, Nina. That's actually so exciting. Uh, I love, I love also that you have rugby there because that's always one of these weird things. You know how in America where they call like football, well, they have American football, well, they have football there, and then they call ours soccer, and you're like, that's really confusing. And then rugby is just rugby, so it's they don't. Call yeah, it well, soccer. the thing is, see, because in Ireland, Jesus, Ireland, um, there's so many sports here I had never heard about. 
because they have the GAA was like, like they have the Gaelic football, mm. they have soccer, they have rugby, <laughs> they have hurling. So <laughs> they call Gaelic football Gaelic football. So then what we or I, I in Spain would call football, they call soccer. Yeah. So I, I feel really like, dumb. I thought you were in America. Sorry, I didn't realize you were in Ireland. It's like America, only green. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like it's like America, but they have Enya, which technically is the source of power for the entire country. <laughs> they don't need power stations; they just feed off the might of Enya, and maybe. I, listen, I had to buy a new laptop while being here, and then I was thinking about whenever I have to go back to Spain, I'm 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 toast because my laptop doesn't have an Enya, and I have no idea how to write an Enya. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh that's broken. so no like i just i just hope i i, I never have to work with spanish and, and this is not like in a negative way it's just for my own sake because i cannot copy and paste any it's like 90 percent of the times so i i hope i never have to work with spanish nina, people because i don't want to have to type any nina you are the most adorable guest we have ever had because sonoise was making a reference to the singer enya who is Irish. <laughs> so confused. And it's absolutely yeah. amazing. Well, she's not Irish per se. She's a celestial being, but, you know, she's, in her current no. she's existence not Celine Dion. in this plane, she has adopted the she, trappings of an Irish No, person. she is not Celine Dion. She's not a celestial being, okay? She's not an iconian. <laughs> She Hang is... on, I love how you just accepted that Celine Dion is a celestial being. Like, uh, so can sure. possibly be. So sure. They are to part be fair, of the eternal age, beast. Actually. Thank you, thank you. If you could turn back time, Cher does all the damn day. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> you're the, the gayest Cher... straight man I I know. Goodwill. <laughs> I'm not gay. I just slept with the man that was. The um... <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't count. It was oral. Uh, anyway, enough about my family but a, life. But enough about Clinton. Um, the chat is absolutely blowing off. <laughs> <laughs> blowing off. Oh, right. Okay. I was uh, Nina. I was explaining the gay hanky code to Goodwill today, and Goodwill's mind has just been blown. He's like, "What? Homosexual oh. agenda?" But yeah, <laughs> and look at him now. He's talking about people blowing off in the chat. Christ. Well, I'm glad Mark's having a good time. <laughs> now the the oh, show. he is. He says, "I'll contribute to make sure Nina has a parachute and to make sure she goes higher than ten thousand feet." <laughs> That's Hello a to... sword right there. Hello to everybody in the chat. Hello to Mark. Hello to Crimson. Hello to David, our favourite background actor from Star Trek Strange New Worlds, who lives, who lives in nice France. Um, to be fair, David to... was posting like thirst gym uh, photos on Instagram and I'm just like, touche, sir. Touche. Right. I'm blaming Sonoy's my com badge is bent. That's, <laughs> there we go. Um, just yes. proximity to me. That's what's Prox happened. Proximity to my boob. Uh, hello to Alan. Hello to the Obsidian Fleet. Hello to Paul. Everyone is in the chat. It's amazing. We love you all for being here. Um, Mark, stop trying to put Nina into the stratosphere. It's kind of worrying. Um, Celine Dion is not a celestial being. <laughs> Sweet summer child, Mark. Yeah. Well, I, I, she could be an infernal being. We're not entirely sure. She's also, from somewhere. Also, Mark wants to know about your pin, Nina, and I do believe he... it is Cardassian. It is. It is a Cardassian emblem, and as I was telling Goodwill before we even went live, this pin is older than I am. Um, wow. It's I don't know from I think it's from ninety two. It's it's an original pin from back in ninety two. It's, it's the next work. generation series of pins that I had. Yeah, ninety two came out. They they used to be available around at conventions back in the early 90s and i had a friend who got me one as a christmas present two or three years ago which i very much cherish <laughs> that's so nice that's so cute i have to say though it's a bit weird like if it's from 1992 like before ds9 properly started and you just go yay kardashi is amazing i've got the pin and then they're like hey they're kind of a parable for the nazis and you're like oh yeah oh. <laughs> like as soon as ds9 starts you're like okay let's just put that over there for a moment but at least yeah. at least they are not the kardashians the kardashians yeah these are not the kardashians yes. you know they, they are the nice race the uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. you know they've done some 
war crimes, but they're not quite as bad as... Uh. Top t top tip to everyone in the chat and to Nina. If you ever want to make Sonoy shut up, just go fill the spoon, Julian. So, we are... No. Um, no. We... <laughs> I'm turning my mic off. No. <laughs> it's, it's so horrible. I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> fill the spoon, my dear doctor. <laughs> One day, I, I love that Destination Trek has Andrew Robinson. I'm just like, how much money? Just shout out, shout out, <laughs> shout out to our friends at Clone Star Podcast, who this week had an interview oh, with Andrew Robinson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it must have took Mike's and, and, and Shaw's every bit of willpower to question Phil the Spoon. <laughs> Not to question, so, sorry, fill the food. Spe um, speaking of terrible things that we're probably going to regret later, uh, Nina, and, and obviously your, your skydive, which is basically uh, things that you didn't realise you agreed to, but now you have to see through to the end. Oh, this, this, this sticker's quite relevant called... for that as well. <laughs> yeah, this We didn't agree to it, but we have to stick out to it. About a blood oath, uh, <laughs> which, uh, yeah, it's quite good. It's a Dax episode. Is this the first Dax episode we've covered on the show? Yes, it is. Science Officer Sinai's. It is uh, season it, it, two, episode 19 of Blood Oath. Now, I really thought this was later. I remember this being way later than it was. And so I was on Netflix looking through the episodes. And I was like, oh, yeah, season six. Scroll through the episodes. Oh, it's not there. Season five. And I went all the way through to season two. And I'm like, really? It, this that's, episode is season two. You yes, know. well, that's because you've, you've, you've suffered the Mandela effect because Kor or Kur is also featured later on in DS9. Yeah. So that is the Mandela effect where you go, oh, this happened in season six, and you're just like, no, it happened in season two. So I quite like it, though, that they, be... they... Sorry. Nina? Yeah, no, to be fair, I, I have to agree with you because I was going, like, I, I, w I wanted to rewatch it, and I, I was the same thing. I was, like, looking for it, and I was like, where is it? And then I just started off from the beginning and i was like how is it in season two like <laughs> yeah. since when it doesn't my feel brain like, just, I was like it doesn't mm. it's the math is not mathing you know it's like <laughs> i guess to be fair if it was in the middle of the dominion war cisco would actually possibly try to stop jadzia leaving it. i mean murder he's already not very happy about like going okay so please don't go and murder people and she's like say see you later bye uh, I'm assuming if the Dominion War was in full for a full full swing, he would be a bit more forceful than that. Shall we give a brief rundown of the episode before we get into it as well? Um, for those, but, who... yes, but through song. <sighs> Let me just have some brand association before I do it. <laughs> this is not planned at all. This is literally me. Just... I need. I Ruining need people to pressure Goodwill in the chat to send me Aaron Brute. Like I've been asking him to, and he won't send me an Aaron Brute. I I I I want Aaron Brute. You've so asked guys, me once, on. and I'm live on air, so I can't order it. So <laughs> hold on, I'll open up. You can get pallets of it. You can get full crates of it on Amazon. That must be available to you. I'm pretty sure you can. Amazon order is just... probably sat there going, "Why are the Irish stockpiling on Iron Brew? Is this some <laughs> sort of revolution about to happen? What's their plan? Is this the is this the Irish unification? The Irish unification. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yay! We've got. Have we got a year, or is it this year that it happened? Yes, 2024. Is it this year? Oh, that's what's coming. That's what started the unification, their demand for Iron Brew, because Northern Ireland have got it and Southern Ireland don't. So this is the Boston Tea Party of 2024. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> so you Did want it the as Boston a Tea Party actually involve any tea or anything? It'd surely triangle yes. sandwiches at the very least. Yes. Good. Yes, that's, they that's why tea, I would attend. And I'd be they like, threw hmm, tea into the Boston shit. Harbor, hence the Boston Tea Party. It's not the type of tea party you're used to, and I don't know what colour <laughs> handkerchief that is, but it's definitely not that. Uh, no tea was drunk. FYI, I like green. I don't like green hankies anymore. So, yeah. the... Uh... <laughs> God, fuck, I have to sing, don't I? You don't uh... need to sing. You can do it like a sort of talk rap type thing. No, I'm too white. So, 
Deep Space Nine, episode two, season two, episode 19, three Klingons, hop onto the station, they are looking for Dax, but they don't realise Dax is dead and it's another Dax, they have a blood oath to kill a white man, is that a racist undertone, I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> But he was okay. an albino. But it's okay, he's albino. <laughs> we all know they deserve death. This albino <laughs> has a lot of guts. And 40. their necks are all broken. <laughs> and there are some undertones of duty and honour and cling on law and blood oaths and something to do with... Hold on. <gasps> Whiskey. Anyway, go on. And Cor starts drunk. And Trelane <laughs> is here, but not, he's not actually Trelane. Right. Okay. <laughs> Well done, actually. Well done, good. Well that done. was absolutely outstanding. But me just springing that bollocks now you on see. you. Well now done. You see. Now you see. If it was Enterprise, I would have sung it far more better because I care more. <laughs> so yeah, that is the brief. <laughs> yeah, I think that's. I think that's quite good. That's. Uh, <laughs> I think that's brilliant. Jesus, yeah, good. I, oh, sorry. I thought. I thought Mark was just like. Why the fuck am I letting him come to LA? No, right, so you're pressing my theme recall. Thank you. Um, this is, no, this is a really good episode. It, it is a Dax episode. Um, Terry Farrell is brilliant as Judge Zia Dax, uh, one of my most favourite characters of all time. Um, and we deal with a lot in this episode. But I want to highlight, this is possibly the best crossover episode that ever was because we get Koloth from A Trouble With uh, Tribbles and Trelane, he is the original Q, the actor. He is mm. the original Q. Um, as confirmed in Strange New Worlds, those old scientists, where it's just like, could it be a Q? No, they've got a whole Trelane thing going on. <laughs> um, so we get Koloth from uh, Trouble with Tribbles. We get... Uh, Co now, Sonoy's uh, highlighted this to me today in one of our many, many, many voice note ramblings that we do throughout the day to maintain our sanity during our day jobs. Um, there are two pronunciations of Kor. There is Kor, where you have to roll your R. Kor, Kor. <laughs> uh, or Kor, as in Sid James from a Carry On movie going, Kor. <laughs> so in this one, we go Kor, who is from Errand of Mercy who is the Kirk is a twat episode, as Sonoy's... I, I, <laughs> so I will justify this in a bit. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we get Kang from Day of the Dove. Um, so we get not one episode crossover, we get a three episode crossover in one. We get a threefer in this. Um, sorry, hang on. Threefer. <laughs> threefer. We get a three. We, I'm not going to say the other three thing because that's, no, demonetized. So... <laughs> But we get three legendary a Klingon, Klingon threesome goodwill. Okay, I'll say it. That's six dicks. That, That's that... six dicks. Right. <laughs> Take that monetization. Ah. <laughs> Nothing from Facebook. You two, please do not demonetize this. <laughs> Limited it's, income. It's too late, Nina. It's too... The deed is done. But okay. like, um, what an amazing thing, though, getting these three yeah. and the fact because this is quite rare that you get stuff like this. Because a lot of the time nowadays, we're like, "Oh shit, the actor's like dead, or they passed on, or they, you know, they or don't they just don't want to do fact it." That they, yeah, they got like three sort of iconic like Klingon uh, villains who I think were all one shots. Because yes, I, they I were, think they, because yes. I, I, yeah, I haven't seen the animated series, but it's the idea of like on the memory alpha. Because basically, what happened is Nina, I was like. Oh, I only have one episode of Trek to watch this week. I don't need to watch a full movie or anything. Oh, brilliant. And then watch it and like, I'm going to have to watch all these three original series episodes now in order to get all the background on all these characters. And I was like, and animated series. No, no, I've been drawing the line there. But, but that was Jimmy Doohan that did that. He did the voice yeah. uh, on that. Uh, so I I've technically not counted that um, because the, it's the actors, it's the original actors that they brought back. And... The way that this episode is done is beautiful because, again, this is Star Trek going, this is a major crossover, cameo, but we're not going to make a song and dance about it. We're not even going to reference Kirk 
uh, the original series, the Enterprise, at all. These are just three old Klingons who have got uh, an errand of vengeance and Jadzia Dax is along for the ride. And it's it's brilliant because it's, again, what we prove is what makes a good Star Trek universe is that it, these people living it, these people exist, they had lives. You don't have to make a song and dance when someone turns and goes, it's Jordy LaForge. And it's like, well, of course Jordy LaForge is going to be there. He lives there. And it's, it's brilliant <laughs> that it's just like, yeah, of course they're still going to be alive. Klingons live a long time if they're not killed in honourable mm. battle. And it's just the way that it's all tied into Jadzia. Well, uh, yeah, the, the, the fact that they've expanded their plot lines, they've gone, hey, these two, these three unrelated Klingon characters, actually, they're mates with each other. And actually, they're mates with like uh, Curzon Dax and stuff. Yeah. And it, it's this wonderful thing which basically not only honors the previous lore, it expands on it and it kind of goes, hey, these are more than you remember them as. So it's this wonderful yeah. nod. But, but also, because I hadn't seen the original series when I originally saw this, I didn't need to like it fleshes them out so well in this episode that it's this wonderful bonus rather than oh well you know about that you know you know what cause like kind of thing it's you know well, how do you feel about it Nina? I mean you know it's the fact that Curzon had this relationship with them was massive given the relationship between the Federation and the Klingon Empire and not only him you know negotiating with them but the fact that he is the godfather of the son is like yeah. that's absolutely massive he is a federation officer mm. and he has this tight relationship with the klingon it's like wow <laughs> yeah you, you wouldn't you wouldn't expect that to happen you know so and at the same time it's like how i say like it's an ep this episode um god i it took me back because i i finished ds9 ages ago but it's filled with this, you know, pure Klingon battle story that lets you look into Klingon tradition and how they go about stuff. And at mm. the same time, because it kind of works on two levels, it works like the Klingon lore, and then at the same time, then we have Jadzia and the, her dilemma, like, whether do I go, do I not go? So it's, yeah. I think it's a very well-built episode. It's it's a great insight into Klingon culture, and it's strange for us to get this in Star Trek without Worf being involved. Like, because we're used to the only stuff we get about Klingon culture is, oh, it's Worf, and it's his backstory, and it's told through his eyes. This has not. This is a Klingon episode told through the 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 the, the, the mirror of Jadzia, which is fascinating. I mean, the. But I, I just I, I genuinely love this episode because of how clever it is that it manages to talk about, you know, the the horrors of getting old and sort of feeling like you're past your prime. Uh, the idea is being like limited by tradition and whether you actually still hold on to, you know, previous like agreements, even though you've grown out of them and whatnot. And like it even brings in like uh, Kira's past, like there's that wonderful scene where sort of. Jadzia just randomly goes like, well, how many people did you kill? And Kira's like, <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, what, what's that line where it's literally like, oh, if it bothers you, I can stop. And she's yeah, like, it bothers, it bothers me. me. Yeah. And it I, bothers I, me. I've never seen dialogue like that. Always in film and stuff, the dialogue is always, oh, if, if it bothers you, I can stop. And then like, no, no, it's fine. And in this, she's like, no, I carry really on. Talk about yeah. it. It's, it's wh what I absolutely love about this is, and and this is very progressive for 1993, 1994, when Jazia realizes that Kor is in uh, the brig, mm. and she goes down and she convinces him that she is Dax, and he goes, "Ah, oh, Curzon, my beloved friend," and she goes, "It's Jazia now." Ah, Jazia, my beloved friend, and he just zero like oh you're a woman now and it's just nothing he just accepts it it's he tolerates it and it's really and it's been used a lot in memes and stuff like that for progression where it's just like you know you get those i mean we've it has been a week in nerdy up north <laughs> shall we say we have had a purge and uh with disco i have seen a lot of disco discourse as well this week and if you if if you can't tolerate that, then you are not a real Star Trek fan. Um, 
And, the, you know, the famous line, when did Star Trek become woke? And you just think 1966, you dickhead. So it's... I, I, I will say, though, I don't think there was any intention to do this with this scene. Like, you know, no, it's like but a it's, sort of it's, incidental progression. But you know? it's brilliant because it's used as if a Klingon can just accept it and move on. Why can't you? And it's just, do you know what I mean? And it's just like people can be who they want to be. People can do what they want to do. You don't have to go, oh, but you're a woman. You are not my friend anymore. He, if if Cork can just accept that Dax is now a woman and, you know, welcome them in with open arms, it's a life lesson for everyone to embrace everyone for who they are and who they become. I, I, I will say, though, that Cork does immediately spoil it by then going, aha, you're a woman. Kiss me. Uh, so it is effectively kind of going, oh, you're a woman now. I will be a perv. Look, look, <laughs> and it look. is a bit like, OK, that's not quite as pretty. As a, man, <laughs> as a man who was harassed by the cult leader on Monday, unintentionally, butt kissed on the cheek. I'm going to wave it. But I'm going to wave it away. On the, what happened? No, 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 not butt kissed. No. Oh, OK. No. What's a butt kiss? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was kissed on the cheek. You oh, dirty, okay, right, cool. dirty, dirty old man. This was dirty, this was dirty Paul. Dirty. This, this is when you were buying Warhammer, so you were obviously totally. Oh, was it yes. when I was in Forbidden Planet? We we were just like, where's Graham? He's in the dungeon buying plastic toys. Oh right, okay. Uh, <laughs> and then Paul was like, let's oh. make out. And you're like, no, hang on, hang on, Paul. <laughs> no, no, hang on. Where's Lee? He's not here. Oh, go on then. So um, we. <laughs> But, but no, it's, it's, it's really good, though. It's the idea of demonstrating that personal choice. So basically, if someone goes, because this is the problem we have in, uh, like in the LGBT plus community, is the fact of just going, why does it matter? Mm. Like where if someone goes, hey, my pronouns are this, my pronouns are they, them now, my pronouns are she, her. And it's the idea of going, it doesn't change your life at all. Just do this thing for me. And it is. It's a sign of respect. Like, yeah. you don't need to understand why someone's non-binary. You don't need to understand why somebody's transgender. You just need to be like, okay, cool. If it'll make you happy, I will do this thing. And surely that's the easiest thing in the entire world. And the, the fact that Kaur responds so well immediately, and he's like, okay, cool. You you know, oh, you're Jadzia now. Great. But it doesn't matter because we're still friends. And And it's cool that, like, while Kang... Kang seems a bit like phobic and nasty, yeah. like towards Jadzia and non accepting. But then, obviously, as the episode goes on, you realize it's not because he doesn't accept her as Curzon and as his friend. It's because he's like, please don't get involved in this. <laughs> I didn't think you <laughs> there were is alive. A reason. <laughs> yeah, there is a reason why I don't want you there. And I thought you were an old man. Like we, we weren't expecting you to still be around, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's just, but, um, I heard you died. Oh shit, you have hit your <laughs> trail. Right, okay. Yeah. It's and, um... like what Sorry, go on. Well uh yeah, like well what you pointed out about um for accepting the fact that Dax is not Jadzia and not Curzon, it's kind of reinforced further on when they're all I think in Jadzia's quarters talking about oh the last time we all see each other and she's talking to Kang, going, I hope you can accept me as a brother again. And I think it's Colas mm -hmm. goes, a brother, ha. Huh. And then yeah. Cora again is like a brother, a sister. What's you know, what yeah, does it yeah. matter? What's the difference? It's it's what what they are as matters. That I think that is probably the strongest like progressive message in it. The idea of just being like, but you're my friend. What does it matter what you are? And mm. that is the identity message we want to take away because it's like what does it matter they're still the person you know they, they haven't changed it's like when someone comes out as gay they haven't changed from the person you knew it's not like they're suddenly shedding off their skin like a reptilian <laughs> member of the royal family or something Thank <laughs> i can feel the money stopping uh... <laughs> so the where's kate middleton good <laughs> Laying her eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
we, we get a bit of context, though, in regards to why they are there uh, and about this blood oath that they t took uh, 80 years ago uh, to hunt down the albino. Um, and uh, basically, they have found where this albino is is residing, living. They know where to go and they uh, decide to plan their vengeance. But there is that animosity towards Dax that uh, Kang does not want her to go um mm. and that you know as as Sonoys has just put out there that kang didn't anticipate dax to be alive or curzon dax to be alive and tries to convince her that curzon's blood oath is not her blood oath it was a different mm. person but she feels honor and she feels an obligation towards dax's friends because it's a part of her. It's a part of who she is. And we get this lovely thing of... Because obviously with Trills, they are not supposed to uh, interact with their previous lives, their previous hosts, mm. or get involved, which we see later on down in DS9's uh, series. But with this, it sort of hits differently, where it's like a blood oath is stronger than uh, switching uh, hosts... Uh, and yeah. the, you know this was an oath and we find out that the reason why that this blood oath was made and why they are planning vengeance against the albino is that this person and his crew were striking klingon colonies and the high commander dispatched three ships three warriors with uh, these ships um, and although they captured most of the albino's uh, party he swore vengeance on the firstborn of every single klingon captain which we find out quite horrifically that he did manage to succeed in where he had genetic virus implanted in every single one of the firstborns. So mm. one of them, who was Jad's, uh, Curzon's godson, died because of this. So there is this moral obligation to Curzon's Klingon brothers and the fact that it was his godson that also lost his life because of this person. So the, 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 there is an effort, the, the, there is a element of obligation, of camaraderie, brotherhood, and vengeance, which, mm. as we see with Cisco, no one else hardly understands. Where it's just, and I love the exchange between Cisco and Jadzia when Jadzia is, you know, eventually accepted onto this mission, onto this mission, and the, you know. We, you know, it'll be an honor to serve beside you. And Cisco, I love the fact he just walks in. He has like one fucking paragraph in the entire episode, and it's brilliant because he just walks in. He just goes, "No," <laughs> and it's just, it's brilliant. It's pure Avery Brooks the way it's delivered because he's like, "I know what you're gonna," you know, like, "I know what you're gonna say no." And well, you know what freaked me out when he comes in the room and he has hair, and I'm like, "Oh, season two, fuck." <laughs> That was yeah. the weirdest thing, but like, oh, we got Cisco had hair <laughs> at a point. But he also reminds Jadzia of her obligations as a member of the Federation and a Starfleet officer. And he tries to say to her that your obligations to them trumps this blood oath that you've done with the Klingons. But mm. she's also of, well, that is the Federation. Like, what you are saying I can't do, that is the Federation's rules. I am obeying Klingon rules, laws, and rituals. So mm. I am tolerating, like not tolerating, but I am obeying their customs and their culture and seeing this through to the end because these are not only my friends, they are my brothers. Mm. So it's the justification of I'm doing this and you better get fucking used to it, which I absolutely love. And this is why I love Jadzia because everyone looks at her and they go, oh, she's just a little meek scientist that walks around with her hands behind her. And she's like, no, she could mm. seriously fuck you up she's a badass she is an absolute yeah. badass and terry farrell uh played her brilliantly and i was so so angry when she left for, for season seven but I, hey. I think that's the thing it's she's so wonderfully acted in this episode because we get like we get to two of the powerhouses of the you know of ds9 in this and that's kira like nana visitor and mm. uh you know dax played by terry farrell and we just get this wonder that wonderful scene I was referring to earlier between them and stuff. And it's it's really wonderful. And it's wonderful that those two characters have become friends. But the the whole thing is also an insight into the trill and the yes. fact that Dax 
genuinely still feels this obligation even though she is a different person now even though she's like a whole extra half personality is in the mix now this blood oath is so strong that like Jadzia can't sleep with it even though they've never been involved with this before and probably didn't even think about it until Cora appears on the station and it demonstrates that how important honor is you know to a trill in previous lives you know yeah yeah Nina what do you think I mean, I think what you said before, like, it's not just the fact that he was close, politically speaking, to these three thing, and uh, it's the fact that th the fact that it was his godson, like, Gerson's godson, who got killed by the virus, it becomes personal. So well, it goes further that, than just... It was named after him, her, the... Yeah. Yeah, they. <laughs> the, them, they. Yeah, they at the time. <laughs> Play it safe. So... It, it becomes personal. It goes further than just the blood oath. You know, it's okay, okay, we have this blood oath, but at the same time, that's family. Mm -hmm. Like actual family. It's going fast so... and furious now. Something <laughs> stronger than family. <laughs> they we have the are Al Albino huge. in one of the other cars and Vin Diesel. <laughs> Vin Diesel plays General <laughs> Kang. Um, the... Oh, Vin Diesel's a Klingon. Why isn't Vin this Vin Diesel is yet? a Klingon. That would be amazing. Just <laughs> saving the day in a bit. A black bird of prey with hooker headers on it, just like uh, <laughs> family stronger than honor. <laughs> um, the... <laughs> How the episode but, should have know, ended. Jetsia <laughs> herself, I think it's uh, like J Terry's character is something that I drew me in when I started watching DS9 because she's gorgeous, like she's mm. drop dead gorgeous, and at the same time, she's this very strong female character who literally, like, she can fuck you up. Like, yeah. I wouldn't want to be on her bad side. So it's like, yes, she's a science officer, but at the same time, she can cut you up with a bloody bat. Yeah. <laughs> so, and you know, you don't you don't want to mess with her. But that's it. I, that, that, that's what I really love about Jadzia, though, is the fact of she's like, and it's a fine line in sci-fi where Jadzia is very sex positive and very, like, feminine, but then also very like she's not a bimbo and yeah. no sci-fi ever does that properly and then ds9 does it yeah. where it's this idea of jadzia's like yeah i love sex you know we see a lot of episodes <laughs> where she's just where she's just like going you know she's having like a you know what are they called not called hookups the, that's a gay thing the, uh, the you know, sins like... of the father if you look at the sins of the father where she's on uh riser with wharf yeah. and she's just like she she does not take wharf shit and she's like i love yeah. you I, you know, I, I, I absolutely love you, but I am not yours. I am not property. Yes. And if you act like this, there is nothing stopping me from going away. There is nothing. I will not think twice about dropping you. And I love what what are the best quotes from that episode? I, I reference this on Top Secret Show reference thing that I'm not allowed to talk about yet, but. The, You've done a great uh, job of keeping that secret, Goodwill. Just... I am, yes, yes. Go team, uh, go, 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 <laughs> yes, go team. That thing. Um, Waving a flag. <laughs> I'll, wear, I'll wave a makeup brush. Hang on, there you go. Yay. Right, the uh, fuck the Tories. But it's there's a line where <laughs> he they they beam down to Riser and Worf is in. He's like full uniform because Worf is just an absolute killjoy in this episode all the way through. Um, mm. and he's just been an absolute grumpy git. They've gone to Riser because uh, Jadzia wants to go to Riser. Um, and mm. he's like, I do not want to seek fun, blah, blah, blah. So she takes off her over shawl thing to reveal like a bikini. Mm. And one of the best lines I ever th I ever heard from Worf where he was just like, a few weeks ago, I was on the Defiant doing patrols in the Gamma Quadrant, and we saw this amazing nebula and it was stunning. It was full of colour and the gases were dancing. I thought it was the most beautiful thing in the universe until now. And I'm like, <laughs> damn! <laughs> um, but that is like, that is like, she is, she can bring that emotion out in people. As we see in the early series with Bashir, she can bring that mm. emotion out in people, but she's also something, someone not to be trifled with, both physically and emotionally. Yeah, because she can hold her own on both. She she's so nuanced, and I think it's the fact that the writers managed to make Jadzia 
seem like a person who's had multiple lives because mm. you you usually if you had a character like not to mention babylon 5 but oh i have uh, where you just have characters that change to suit the plot a lot where it goes hey we need someone to do this well, <laughs> magically this character does this thing now and you're like that's never referenced again whereas in ta- like star trek babylon 5 <laughs> You can come out, it's safe now. It's safe now. <laughs> I've smashed the DVDs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're not going on streaming. Um, but the 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 idea of basically like DS9 does it where it manages to make a plausible character who can have all of these conflicting things where they're basically they're feminine, but actually they're also masculine. Oh, but they're like a warrior, but they're also tender. And oh, they're a science officer, but they're also like a fantasist and whatnot. And it's Mm. all of these conflicting things. And then you realize that that's what trills are meant to be. And I can't imagine a writing team doing a better job of reflecting a character like that than Jadzia and Terry Farrell for, pulling it off which, basically which is, which is why like i i am frustrated and this is again i know everyone's got to be jumping on this but it is not a slight but i will get to it shortly nicole de Burr smashed it for that one series season that she was in absolutely smashed it as Ezri dax my frustration was how the trill were portrayed in star trek discovery because they are intensely complex beings they, as Sonoisa said, has lived multiple lives, and the writing in DS9 portrayed these people as experienced, knowledgeable, wise people that take a host and embrace their traits, their personality, their memories, and everything like that, and amalgamate it. Like, sort of like a, a biological bog, in a way, where they assimilate... Aren't the bog bio- biological? No, they're... they're, they're, they're <laughs> Uh, biological and technological. They're cyborgs, not androids. They're cyborgs. They're cyborgs. Oh. They're like they're like Elon Musk with his new relic. Hey. Um, with his they, with his new. <laughs> just gonna, buy new relic premium one? to avoid ads. But um, you know, you walk. Can down you the street, imagine? Can you imagine when we finally get to that future where people have sort of like you know, remember the episode of DS Nine where you have someone who has like a a brain jack or whatever that allows them to interface with computers and stuff like proper shadow run stuff. As soon as we get that in the real world, we're going to have adverts. It's literally going to be that you sort of, no one's going to get any sleep anymore. No. Yeah. You just, (laughs) you just plug in, you get, go to surf the web matrix style. And then suddenly it's fucking Grammarly. (laughs) I'm going to be sat there doing my job and I'm just going to get constant fucking ads for team. You, I don't even shop on (laughs) team. Yeah, but they are just. I'm going to install an ad blocker me. in my brain. They That's are trying to sell me this fucking toolkit for the entire week now, and I am sick of it. I have. You got too. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has nobody bought the toolkit? They yet? are. They are getting to everyone. I've been seeing this advert. Oh my I, god. I I don't even like. I haven't touched a toolkit in years. Why do I need a toolkit? See, I don't know. But it's ads everywhere. There. I could understand where they're going to be because it goes, oh, he drives a 25-year-old Ford. He definitely <laughs> needs tools. No, I've got tools. <laughs> I Stop don't trying even to sell drive. Me. Stop sell me your chocolate fucking spanners. But um, <laughs> you, yeah. you sleep with your tools like a child with a teddy bear. No, You're just in bed being like, I, ah, <laughs> my delicious tools. I sleep with a torque wrench under my pillow. But that's for security. <laughs> that's all. But um, the... <laughs> That's me after I played half like, <laughs> you know, like, oh well. That's a crowbar. Uh, maybe I should Philistine. just have this massive crowbar. There we go. You Philistine. Um, <laughs> fuck, what was I hearing about? But uh, yeah, sorry, I derailed yeah, so that they, one slowly. But yeah, hey, Nina, joining us on our tangents. Uh, but yeah, it's it's sort. Of, fuck, I keep thinking of the. You are now. triggering my ADHD like nothing. Like this is brilliant. The <laughs> moment someone else, like seriously, if and this is how my conversations go whenever I'm talking to anyone, like my friends in general, it's like. The moment someone mentions something else, we're gone. We're gone. <laughs> and we'll eventually, like, we'll eventually reroute to the main theme, like, an hour and a half later. We will. But yeah. there's going to be, like, 200 tangents in the meantime, <laughs> just because it's important to the story, you know? Fuck the Tories. That's how the episode, that's how our show works, basically. 
But the uh, yeah, so like the, the way that the Trill are written in Deep Space Nine is absolutely brilliant because, like I said, they are biological Borg, fully biological Borg. They assimilate the the new host's uh, entire personality into their role and they amalgamate it and build upon it. And it was just frustrating in in Discovery that, that we don't get that m- multifaceted layer of Trill. Stop laughing, Lee. Fix your car. You I'm, la- I'm reading the I'm reading the chat, and Mark Card here, being like, oh god. Don't say that loud so <laughs> No one is safe, Mark. Nobody. Yeah. I'm sharing Not a even plane you, with him. I'm going to Las Vegas with Sonoys. I'm sharing a plane. I think <laughs> I'm going to be on the North Fly list. But um, <laughs> the... <laughs> the... What was I on about? Yeah, so... Um, I, I just think it'd be quite good if I try and, like, smuggle, like, 50 weasels in my hand luggage. And geese. then I'm just like, <laughs> you know geese. what would improve this flight? Weasels! You're gonna, you're gonna be like Sid. You're gonna be like Sid with his mangoes. <laughs> yes. Do you know Sidig's Sid, Sid story with the mangoes in this yeah. case? <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's him. It's gonna be him. Um. Anyway... So, so going going back to the the actual episode we're here to review. Uh, fuck, what was that about? Yes. So the whole thing with the trill, when they're on the bird of prey and they're planning their the the method of attack, um, and we see that you know the the, the Kang and Kor they just want to do a, a direct frontal attack, mm. and uh, Jazzy is no, we should do this and we should you know we should be stealthy and, and Kang is like I want to see I want him to see us coming and not kill him in his yeah. bed um and and jazzy is like what that's a but we finally plan. but we finally understand like why kang was so apprehensive on bringing jazzy along because mm. this was a one-way trip this was their moment of glory it was a suicide mission it was a Wait, suicide yeah. mission yeah and it's it's a scary scene because it's obviously it's him saying hey we should do this and jazzy is like maybe we should do a stealthy thing and he's like no no we won't do that and then, you know, and then Koloth and Kor are basically just being like, oh, well, today's a good day to die uh, and all of the platitudes. And then, you know, they go off, but they seem satisfied with this idea of, oh, well, I guess that's what we're doing. They they don't question at all. Whereas Jadzi is the wild card basically being like, this is stupid. Hold There's so many second. better ways yeah. to do this. Yeah. And then once they've left, Jadzi basically calls him up on it and says, what's going on here? You sound like... You sound like someone who has set everyone up. And he's like, well, about that. <laughs> Speaking of which, team you. Um, but uh, it's this idea of just, <laughs> he's just like toolkit. Have they look at this toolkit? So targeted ads into DS9 now. But uh Do you know yeah, what's but, really but I quite fucking like annoying? Do you know what's really, effect... you know what? really fucking annoying? Just a sorry, quick tangent. The ad I got on my phone before watching, mm. like before the live started was fucking tv <laughs> just say anyway continue yeah but but and you know but it's this idea of like this is the wonderful insight we get into klingon culture which is the idea of they have to die in battle because earlier on uh kang asks jadzia sort of oh how did curzon die and she's like oh well uh, you know, surrounded by loved ones, the doctors tried to keep him alive for a bit longer. You know, he died of old age. And Kang's like, ugh, that's awful. That's no way to die. And then it kind yeah. of explains the cultural reasons of him being like, I don't care if it's suicide. I don't care if we know that we're going to die and it's a setup. Because he's contacted the albinos saying, hey, we're on our way. Give us a bit of a show and we'll and you can kill us. But... That's apparently better to him than not dying in battle. And that's a crazy little law dump, effectively, you know? But that's the Klingons all over, isn't it? That they. Yeah. The Klingons can live a very long time, but they don't want to live a very long time. They want to go out in a blaze of glory. They want to head into yeah. Stovacar backwards <laughs> on fire because that is the best way. <laughs> to go and we you know we realize that's why kang wants to do the frontal assault oh my that you know he, he is that what they're out... calling it these days lee highly and that's what fix your car and that's why uh he was apprehensive with jadzi you're going because if it was curzon if curzon was still alive yeah obviously he knew curzon 
was not alive. He he would not mm. li- live as long as as a Klingon would. And he's like, this is a one way mission. This is a suicide mission, and we uh, it's being planned out with the albino who's actually tired of forever looking over his shoulder and he's organized 40 of his best men and they're going to go out in a blaze of glory and i love the fact that jadzia just turned around and goes well do you really think he's going to play fair do you really think he's going to like have only 40 men or do this or Mm. or you know he's going to have they they are going to have weapons they are going to just shoot as soon as you get to the front dot they are just going to shoot you he's not going to do it in a blaze of glory he's not going to Mm. obey what you want and this is where jadzia plays in because she's like well i could just do a a dampening field that can render all the weapons useless our disruptors won't work their phases won't work but it's an even keel and Mm. she goes you know and uh he says something about curse and he goes that's the joy about jadzia jadzia is a scientist and it's brilliant because it's like Curzon's had a life, the previous horse had a life, but then it's like, yeah, but Jadzia can also bring something to the table, something that they've never thought of because they are not scientists. So she's this, even... So go on. This is the first time in the episode because it's always been throughout the entire episode until this point that Jadzia's on the back foot because she's not Curzon, because yeah. she's not the person that they know. She can't do what Curzon used to do. Yeah. Like, Curzon probably would have been able to beat Koloth in the fight that they have earlier where she's trying to demonstrate. Yeah. You know, yeah. Thing to thing. All these things where she does get beaten by him, all of these things. And this is the first time that you go, no, but it's good that you're Jadzia because they wouldn't have survived if it wasn't for yeah. what she brings to the table. Yeah, and like it like, actually brings you an advantage. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing. And it's this wonderful... Wonderful thing. Well, to be fair, they'd all be dead if it was Curzon, because Curzon would be like, ha <laughs> drinking women. Yay. Oh, I'm dead. You know, so. Whoopsie. <laughs> <Stovacore>. Whoopsie. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> Whoopsie daisies. My friends um, are dead. I love, I love that. That's, <laughs> that's the most British thing in the entire world. It's, you know how in films or whatever, where like the villain fi- dies or something, and they always go like something like, "Oh no," or you know, or like swear or something, and then they get hit by the missile or whatever. Just, I love just, the idea um, of like, "Oh, whoopsie!" Ju- ju- <laughs> just, just another Captain Goodwill tangent. There is someone at work who has got a private number plate. Are, are they a whoopsie? The private number plate <laughs> is W H zero zero P E E. Now I hope. Whoopie. I hope, with all my hope, that it's spelled whoopee and not <laughs> woo P. <laughs> he's very excited about P. Yeah, he's into water sports and he's going woo P. Because <laughs> that's not something, that is not something to put to... on the back of your feet. That's all I'm going to say. You need to go to B&Q. You need to buy one of the letter S's that we have on like signs and stuff. And just change his car to be whoopsie. <laughs> In this automobile, there is a whoopsie. Be warned. <laughs> That's the most British that I've done a whoopsie. Um, oh dear. Right. I've, oh dear. A whoopsie. Mm. I've seen to have whoopsied. Oh, I'll get the Kleenex. <laughs> the, uh, so, yeah, the... the... <laughs> Aren't you glad you came on, Nina? Isn't there... <laughs> well, this is best thing that's ever happened to me like is, i'm genuinely gonna, so happy i'm here see what this is gonna make jumping out of a plane so much better because at least now you're like maybe i won't pull the cord maybe you know, <laughs> 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 don't fund the parachute uh, <laughs> that's it you can the parachute, it's i've fine. become a hell diver uh for my <laughs> hell diver boys there thank you um the <laughs> democracy but um when they get to the planet though and the one thing I love about when they get to the planet, you see the the this this complex, and you see these starship trooper dudes with their tinted sunglasses. Oh my god! And it's just like, dude, you're a trucker. Um, I I like the idea. It's like, what else was set filming on the same lot that they just went? Can we borrow those costumes? Because nothing about this yeah. feels that, yeah. like they, they probably were looking to it. save up yeah. some money. They're like, we could probably use that. This, this is like Total Recall, Demolition Man, and then DS9 was just in the middle. And they were just like, oh, we got caught. Oh, we can take them. Um, but it's... Uh, the one thing I love about this is when they get there and th- they start asking questions like, is the Albina actually here? You know, where would he be? And the 
the balls on um, call off where he's just like, Hello. I'm just gonna go ask someone. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is what I like though the fact that Koloff appears to be like he wasn't he because he was in trouble with Tribbles wasn't he his, Koloff was yeah he was trouble with Tribbles is Koloff's episode yes because uh, Cole Cole was there and it's this idea of he is is he the only one that we ever witness in Star Trek where he is effectively a covert Klingon. His whole thing no. is subterfuge because he no. disguises himself as someone else. No, that's not him. Oh, is it not? No, oh. that was it's the not. that was the administrator. Silly. You need to watch the original series. Um, I did, I did. I'm just totally he was the original. He was the, I was um, he was the uh, assistant administrator to K seven. It was a human. Mm. The captain uh, Koloth was the captain of the ship, the Klingon ship. Ah, uh, right, okay. But it's still, it's the idea of, we see Koloff being very, like an assassin in this episode, where it's this idea of, like, in the beginning where he sneaks up on o Odo in the security office, and this is Odo we're talking about. You know, it's the idea. Yeah. And he manages to sneak up on him, and then here he's just like, okay, I'll just go and find someone, and then just walks into a patrolled area, somehow manages <laughs> to sneak up on someone. And like knock them out, and also off camera interrogate them and get all of the information from someone without alerting anyone else. And he's just like going, "These are not typical Klingon skills, but, but well this done." This is why <laughs> this is why Koloff is the Daham master because he yeah. can sneak up on anyone. And it's the fact that that security guard is so shit; he doesn't feel a back left. Poke him once, <laughs> and then pokes him again. He goes, "Oh, what is that?" And it's just this big fucking cling on right behind him and he's just like you need to get fired. oh yeah the thing we were looking for oh, oh, yeah. like because the, the, the fact that like, he's like as you said like he pokes him on the shoulder yeah. like i don't know if someone like if something anything pokes me in the shoulder my first instinct is looking over my shoulder not yeah. scratching my shoulder <laughs> like yeah. for, like seriously no <laughs> how bad is the planet when and getting punched in the shoulder is something to just ignore i I quite like the idea, though, that what if they'd done the scene for comedy and they basically had him being tapped on the shoulder and he's like... Huh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 his, hand goes, his hand goes all the way up to Koloff's face and just, he's like... Just touching on. And and he's, it. He's behind me, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> It'd be brilliant if he gets to his face and he goes... You didn't have ridges last time. Just a nice callback. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Like, hang on. But I love how this is not addressed in this episode at all. Like, it's no. the 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 next the episode with Wolf where they bring it up and they're like, we do not like to talk about it. And yeah, literally nobody mentions the fact that Core is blatantly not how he used to be. He's know? ribbed for our pleasure. So mm -hmm. the um... can I say now that can I say now that we're on topic of comedy. Like, at the beginning of the episode, poor Odo. <laughs> <laughs> like, that man was, like, he was fighting for his life the whole entire bit he was on camera. Like, and when he goes up to Kira, I was like, sorry for the delay. It's been a Klingon afternoon. And then she goes, <laughs> Klingon afternoon. Every time there's Klingons in the space station, it's a Klingon afternoon. And I was like, oh, my God, this man is literally fighting for his life right now. And he either is going to resign or shoot someone. <laughs> this is this is the thing though. It's like it's why Odo is one of my absolute favorite characters in Trek. Is just that he's just so long suffering. He's literally just so sort of like, I am so done with everyone's shit, but I'm still going to do the best job I can do. Uh, and that that thing, the fact that I, I mean, we're we're not even talking about like. We've talked on this show a lot when we do episodes about how clever Trek is, where it mm. still manages to work in every character. Isn't it mm. crazy having Trek that uses all of the characters' goodwill? Except uh, the anyway, in this Discovery episode. Season 5. Um, but, the, <laughs> um, but it's this idea of like where it has a Quark and Odo, Odo scene at the beginning uh, just to go, hey, here's Quark. Quark gets to do something. Oh, here's a Cisco. One, well, technically two scenes. And then it kind of goes, hey, that's so they, they get their paycheck and we include them, you know? Ooh. Go on, Goodwill. Where's Bashir? Who gives a shit? Anyway. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <clears throat> Miles? 
Miles. Okay, Miles. okay, that's a good point. Miles, good Miles, ninety percent of time, Miles is in charge. Like that station would blow up if he wasn't yeah. around. So whenever Miles is not on camera, he's fixing something because that's what yeah. he does twenty four seven. He's like, we know that the, yeah. for a fact. He's okay, I know I'm supporting here by the fact that they're not all dead in space. It suggests yeah. that Miles is there somewhere. He's chained to a radiator in Keiko's quarters. That's just, just <laughs> get it out there. I can fix this temperature gauge. That's why if Keiko you like. and I get along so well. Ah, you're oh, the, the most evil, of the damned one. She is the most evil Star Trek fan in history. <laughs> she likes Keiko. So, also, quick sideline. Quick sideline. I was watching Monk the other day because I'm rewatching Monk because I love Monk, and I was it's a watching the obscure thing. But yeah, cool. no, no, no. It comes. It comes to the point. In charge of a mental institution, Rosalind Chow. And I was like, ah! <laughs> she, she's she been put in charge of the people. She, she's, she, she's locking people up. Hold on, hold on. Is it the same mental institution that uh, that Cisco's in at the beginning of season seven? Maybe You know, the is. after the Far Beyond the Stars episode. Maybe Ooh. it is. Oh. Further alluding to and the Mars there as well as the Doctor. Yep. Telling we'll you. We're making canon. Star Trek <laughs> Legacy. Keiko O'Brien will be the villain. The gold <laughs> cut of the 25th century. So, oh like my whatever God. influence we can ever have in uh, Trek fandom or the wider picture is literally just going, please... Please, Terry Metallus. I'm gonna, right, I'm gonna make a play. Go I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make, make her a villain. I'm, go, I'm gonna make happy. a play now. Mark, wake up! Right, you know Terry. Mark? Get Terry. Mark. 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 <laughs> um. Are you there? We need to find Terry Metallus. It should be fine. He's the one with the DeLorean. Find him, <laughs> and we need to say to him for Star Trek Legacy when it gets greenlit, not if. When it gets greenlit, Keiko or Brian? <laughs> Got it. This is weird. Everyone's like, "Do you not want to have a sensible request?" No, no. no. Keiko, Keiko or Brian? Keiko or Brian? <laughs> um, because you know, like you're we, going. I, you're going to LA. To I'll find him. I'll find him. Yeah, away mission. In search. I'm, I'm a car guy. Finding Terry and Palace. I'm, I'm Instead a of fighting guy. Nemo, is fainting. Fighting I'm, Terry. I'll I'll sit. I'll get off the plane and go. <laughs> Delorean, thirty miles that way. Mark says he's up. Are you up? No, oh dear. Cross your legs. Mark's up. Oh, good. <laughs> so they um. Oh, hang on. Hang oh, on. Finding metallic. Breaking news. That's the new breaking, film. breaking news. Yep. My mother says hello, Graham. Oh, okay, moving hello, on. Hello, mother. <laughs> Wait, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> hello, Goodwill's mother. Okay, I was about to say no, I'm not doing that, but then your pitch sold me. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <This is laughs> I'm, I'm glad it sold it because the other one involves chaining him to a radiator. <laughs> no, we're not doing a Miles or me. Um, we're going to run out of radiator space at this rate. It's okay. Many... Nina's got more we're than We're going to have to have them in separate bloody rooms and I'm going to be like, if they all turn the heating up, it's going to bankrupt me. But... <laughs> See, see, the thing is, well, in this economy, if I freeze to death, so will Goodwill chained up to my radiator. Oh. But, <laughs> how do, how but have I stayed, at the same time... How have I stayed alive, everybody? I bleed the radiator intermittently and <laughs> sustain myself on the juices of the radiator. The... <laughs> <laughs> yes, but but Goodwill has always discovered my burgers, though. So there's that kind of oh my balances God. it out. Guys, you have never seen. This is going to sound so wrong. You have never seen Nina's juicy burgers, okay? I have seen these images, okay? Hold on, wow. I need to do that Muppet thing where it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> No, but the best part is like, because I was on Facebook and there's something popped up on my memories from like, I don't know, a year or two ago, maybe more. And it was one night I made homemade burgers for me and my dad for dinner and I posted a picture of it. And <laughs> Goodwill left a comment on that and I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm something of a chef myself. And he was like, hold on a minute. Do you make that? Like, yes. <laughs> oh, what can I say? Some juicy burgers. I'm a simple man. So the uh... a simple tailor. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, but Tinker Tager but... Soldier Burger Eater. The I... uh, 
Yeah. So anyway, the 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 the, the 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 fuck the Tories. Um, the episode. So, <laughs> So basically, they're on the planet. Koloff yep. goes off to get answers. Uh, Jadzia puts a plan together for basically how they should go about this. Because this is the whole thing. They literally were expecting to die. And then Jadzia is like, no, no, we can totally solve this. And basically takes command, which is quite great. And it suggests that obviously the three of them trust her now. And then, yeah, she she runs off to create a distraction, I think. And then she, I don't know what she does specifically, but she goes off and does something. And then she has to run back. And they pretty much do a full-on assault of the building. Because because the weapons don't work and the uh, Albino's an idiot and was expecting them to actually honor the agreement and just come yeah. unarmed. They don't seem to have, like, any knives. So we actually see them sort of going bat left against gun, which is not as yeah. effective as you yeah. think it would be. And and let's be honest, how unbelievably easy and quick was it for these, for these Klingons to infiltrate a compound? Three with elderly Klingons. Three elderly Klingons, yeah. uh, which sounds like a really good sitcom that Paramount needs to develop <laughs> straight away. You know, uh, straight, straight, straight after, after that, that's your Photoshop yeah. job. Straight that's after, your... straight after Pock and Dar, cop landlords, we are going to get <laughs> three elderly Klingons. Maybe we could um, do it as what's the film like? Three men and a baby. Of friends, three men and an albino. Instead of friends. Oh my god! The Golden Girls. <laughs> <laughs> the Golden Warriors. Thank you for being the yeah. Tach. Ha- have brilliant. that, but we have Instead to put Daron in this. Klingons. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be there for you with a 116 centimeter battler. The yeah, and it just does the the works the full description Jadzia gives of the battle into the song. Five point three kilograms, 116 centimeter battler. Tip to tip. So they storm the compound and they get in very fucking easily, I might say, for three elderly. I love that he didn't lock the door either. Like you would think, they blew the fucking door up. Oh, do they? Okay, because yeah. it just looks like they just sort of kick it down. I'm like, Look, okay. a Yale padlock is not going to sustain a Klingon, okay? We Doesn't know this. That. <laughs> Damn you, Yale! I'm not going um, to keep Mark against the bloody radiator by the sounds of it. Is Mark against the radiator as well? Oh, at least someone can make pie, that's why. Well, everyone, they, like, um, there's space for everyone. This, oh, oh. No. <laughs> we must huddle for warmth. Um, <laughs> the... Cosy lives, love. Cosy lives. Cosy lives. Damn you, Sunak. <laughs> um, but yeah, we we get down to the um, fuck the Tories. We 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 get to the the final showdown at the staircase with the Albino, um, who looks like Mark Sloan, not Mark Sloan. What's he, Doctor Sloan from Diagnosis Murder? In some strange demonic way. Don't and ask me why. Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke. Um, the Dick Van Dyke of DS Nine. Are we suggesting that the Albino? Sorry. Is child but... killer is Dick Van Dyke. The albino needs a hairdresser visit. Like, I don't know, every single time I've watched that episode and I've seen him, it looks like he's got a chicken on his head. <laughs> Maybe that's just me, but like... <laughs> I mean, like, I remember so when, I first was watching, when I first was watching DS9 and that episode came up, I was like, what the fuck is the albino? <laughs> so it took me ages, and to this day, it still doesn't make much sense to me, but like, Every time he's on screen, it's like that man is literally wearing a blooded chicken on his head. Like he either needs a hairdresser or a comb. <laughs> I'm gonna give you an animal death. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like that guy from Labyrinth. You know the guy who's just got the like the ostrich on his head or something. Oh my god. And he's arguing with it. That's the albino's true form. That's it. Um, that's that's after you give him a moonstone. But, but this, uh, like I like say... but with a chicken instead. Yeah, it's just the chicken uh, working the albino. <laughs> what the arms, you asshole? What the arms? The albino is like it's like a Klingon mech. <laughs> a weapon to surpass me. Metal Gear. Um, the <laughs> <laughs> come on, just kill more godchildren. So, sorry, Nina, that's you a reference. That's a reference for us for us old people from the nineties. <sighs> um, <laughs> but this is this is a sad showdown for me. Um, because in the space of like 35 minutes, we have known these characters. We, we've we had these characters fully fleshed out in the space of 35 minutes. And to see them die 
one at a time, apart from obviously Core. I, I mean, that got to me. That really does did. Kang die? Yes. He does die because it's yes. like I know Koloff dies, but I can't remember if actually because obviously Kor gets stabbed as well, and it doesn't really mention that he survives. But then he just comes back later. Whereas like you, you know Koloff, we know dies, and Kang, I was like maybe he survives and he's just never mentioned again. Yeah, but, yeah. he does yeah. die. Oh, okay, yeah. and uh, it's 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 kind of ironic that you know the the one person they did not want that the Kang did not want on the mission ends up. Um, basically, allowing him to to carry mm. out the blood oath to to fulfill his his vengeance before he dies, take the final um, blow, take the final yeah. blow, yeah. And it's just, I loved it. I I I just I love the way that it. It's poetic. It, it's poetic. Well, J- it's Jadzia's big clingy. worry. We we didn't even go over it, but Jadzia's big worry is that. She's not sure if she can kill. Like, you know, she's agreed to this blood oath, but obviously she's asked Kira, and Kira's like, look, killing people changes you. Yeah. Uh, and Jadzia's very nervous about it, but obviously wants to honor the agreement. And this perfect situation, uh, you know, because the albino knows, the albino taunts her, basically going, hey, you don't have the guts to kill me kind of thing, so I'm just going to walk out of here. But obviously, distracted, uh, distracts him long enough so that Kang's just like, oh, yoink, you fucker, uh, you know, and kills him. And, and I think it's wonderful because I mean, it means that Jadzia has helped fulfill the oath. The Kang can die happy. Koloff didn't die for nothing. The albino is dead, and Jadzia hasn't stained her hands directly you know Mm. and i mean i think at the same time at the same time i think it emphasizes like the fact that she has a chance to kill him but she doesn't directly act upon it like it still Mm. emphasizes her dilemma Mm. that the dilemma she's been you know dealing with the entire episode Mm. and then kang the judge isn't curzon it's it's this final affirmation of going curzon might have been able to do it but jadzia can't one one thing I think is weird though in the episode is that Jadzia's like, oh, I, I don't know what it's like to kill someone. And I'm like, surely one of the Dax <laughs> hosts. I mean, well, we, we do know, we know, know later that. on yeah. that one of we them know. definitely did. Yeah. But surely Curzon, like how is he how how on earth can he not actually be a killer or something and just happily hang out with three Klingon warlords for like years you know well, maybe, it seems a bit maybe, like odd <laughs> maybe he did that much Klingon blood wine and Klingon blow that he just it was omitted Klingon blow Klingon blow <laughs> 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 I'm gonna make my own Klingon casino with with Klingon blackjack and Klingon ochres <sighs> um the one thing I wanted to address on, though, that one of the final parts of the episode, well, the final part of the episode, and I got strong Picard uh, similarities to this, Jadzia returns to duty at Ops, and mm. you can see that what has happened has changed her, and we just get this silent exchange between her and yeah. Cisco and her and Kira. No words are spoken at all, but they all know what has happened and Jadzia is forever changed. Kira knows that Jadzia is forever changed because like Kira says, when you take a life, you lose a bit of your life as well. Mm. And Cisco, obviously, Cisco did not want her to go and he just didn't get it. And he didn't get it with Curzon, which, mm. you know, but that is Cisco being the Starfleet officer, the, the, the Federation citizen Starfleet officer, which, as we see later on in the series, he does become great. Um, as we as we go on about great leaders in science fiction, um, mm. in Star Trek, in <sighs> Babylon 5, in Battlestar Galactica. Those... Don't say it three times, it'll appear. <laughs> oh, no. Another animated movie with a budget of $23. The... Um... <laughs> we see that <laughs> sorry <laughs> fuck the Tories we see that the greatest leaders uh, apart from the Tories uh, are the great leaders they are not they you know it's never black and white it is never day and night they are the ones mm. where they live in the blurred line and we we see 
Cisco's transition from this episode in Blood Oath where he's like clear cut and no, this is murder, you can't go normal mm. to say season six and season seven. Well the where... the thing is it's it's a transitionary period for all the characters and it's hilarious yeah. that DS9 does it everyone gets progression in DS9. Yeah. Where we kind of have where Kira gets the opposite. Kira starts off being this sort of no authority, no rules, we do what we need to do. Yeah. Why the hell are you trying yeah. to chain me in here with this crappy office job kind of thing and by the end she's like no we have to be part of the federation we have to do this and stuff we have to save the alpha quadrant and then jadzia and cisco who are very much like jadzia is more sort of in a gray area to start with because of all these experiences she's had but cisco is very straight laced at this point like it's the next yeah. episode we get i think is the the marquee one where we first mm. get introduced to the marquee eddington and he has to go against you know uh one of his friends another uh, commander who's turned rogue effectively yeah. like turned traitor and he can't believe it he's absolutely shocked and then obviously like you yeah. say we get to season 5 we get to season 6 and we have him going what they taught me was not the best way to do things this is the yeah. only way we can possibly succeed yeah and it's this great progression we have here but i like to think like you goodwill that this episode helps chip away at cisco's conviction that you know yeah. the rules are the best way to do things you know but this is it's, i think this it is, starts cracking it yeah. yeah but i think this is what makes him a good captain because at this point he's still a commander um, mm. And this is what makes him a good captain to realize that you can never do everything by the book. Sometimes you have to think outside of the box. You have to get a little crazy and not to swallow. <laughs> don't need and, to tell me twice. <laughs> but you don't have to throw up in my mouth twice. But this is. <laughs> Yay! Um, <laughs> Way! <laughs> um, Pug and Dark. Couple of notes. Um, Oopsie. Miggly me? Is, is it Miggly me or Miggly Moo? Miggly Moo, you heathen. Miggly Moo, right. Miggly Moo. Um, but yeah, it 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 sort of starts to chip away at at his morals and and his his ethics and his 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 sense of duty that doing it by the book and by the Federation way is not always the best way to do it, the most successful way to do it. And we we see mm. this especially with the Marquis arc and then obviously the Dominion War. Um, I was going to ask though. Because I'm introducing a question every week, and this is really annoying because the episodes that we've had, I've already done this, but would this have warranted a second contacts episode? And the answer is yes, because we fucking get it. So there's no point in asking <laughs> it. Um, but it is. But did we want one? <laughs> yes. But this is. But this, for me, I'm going to ask: Do you think this is one of the better crossover episodes that we have had? in star trek where they yes. don't reference it they don't mention anything about the original series they don't mention kirk the twat they don't they mention nothing and it's just literally these three Klingons. they could have just taken three brand new random klingons and put them in that same position but i don't think they would have had the same effect if they didn't go right we are bringing the three key klingons from the original series uniting them making them good and fleshing them out fully in Deep Space Nine. Yeah. And I think this was a bold move. It was a daring move. And it just paid off brilliantly. For a season two episode as well, where the show is still finding its feet, I think this yeah. is the first instance where this show really starts to find its feet and hit the ground running. Because at yeah. the end of season two, we get a fucking galaxy class ship blowing up we get the dominion and you're just like this is not your mom and dad star trek this is like this is star trek after dark oh my <laughs> this is like this is this is what star trek should have been all along mm. and i think for me this is the episode that 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 that, that cemented that and started that that tra trajectory to the ds9 that we know and love I, I don't know. I, I think it was kind of foreshadowed before this, but it was definitely, this is one of the ones where the writers are testing the waters for like, yeah. what can we do here? Like, and this must have been such a, 
big deal for the writers and everyone involved because obviously they all would have loved the original series and come mm. from that and then effectively this is like we can bring Kor back you know we can bring yeah. Kang back you know that must be the most amazing you know thing like it's like Lower Decks being like hang on we can get Rom oh my god you know like but this is the thing. I, I think it's a wonderful honour for a writer I think I, it was only 25 yeah. years since these actors had been on the mm. original series it wasn't think about it but they still would have been in their 20s and like their I know you know their sort of 50s I'm just gonna feel so I'm gonna feel so sad now because the distance between the original series episodes of Deep Space Nine is the same age as Nina so it wasn't that long (laughs) actually actually it's one one year more (laughs) than my age it was younger than the gap between these episodes yes (laughs) I'm a, I'm a Star Trek baby fan. But I I think that, I think there's something wonderful about that though that you know you can still love this because there's so many people nowadays where they're like oh you can't you you can't enjoy old games because they look crappy oh you can't enjoy old TV because it's so sort of like you know so- backwards and stuff. And it's the idea of going no this demonstrates that Trek is amazing and timeless that you know people can pick it up regardless of the fact like- that they weren't there in that context. Like I mean, I'm 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 24, and but it, I've had I've been on my fair share of. I'm sorry, Goodwill. I'm gonna start bringing it up every single time we talk now because that reaction is brilliant. Um, <laughs> no. Make him uncomfortable, Nina. Guys, I did it. I'll I, take I a holiday. I'm, I I broke Goodwill. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna have to wipe a tear. <laughs> no, but like, so I've been on my fair share of fandoms. I'm not gonna say, like, I'm not gonna name them, but like, I've been kind of hopping from fandom to fandom, especially because I would join a fandom and the community would be great, and then eventually over time it would become toxic. Mm. And then I would try and find a new home and a new home, and then eventually at some point, I don't even know how I came across the Star Trek. I think it must have, funny enough, it must have been one of the reboots. Like. Yeah. <laughs> And because I think it was playing on TV or something, and it just drove drew me in. And from there on, I just started watching all the shows and everything. But that's like I something as a fan of many things. Something I will never understand, I will never support, and something I will forever hate is gatekeeping. Yes. Like I don't understand what's the point. Like if 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 you're enjoying something, why not share it with other people who would also enjoy it? Like, what's the point of gatekeeping? Like, what are you gaining from it? And you know, yeah. you have people like that in the Star Trek community sometimes. But then, ninety nine point ninety nine percent of my interactions with people in the Star Trek community have been very positive, and I've mm-hmm. made friends, and you know, I've been able to talk about Star Trek, and I've been, I don't know, just enjoy something that has been bringing me joy. And actually helped me get out of a very dark place many years ago. And I've been able to do it like for years and years and years. And that has, you know, allowed me to be here today. <laughs> so it's like How amazing. I don't understand. I don't understand the point of gatekeeping in fandoms. And like Star Trek as a franchise is the gift that keeps giving. Hmm. I think, yeah. Like I, it's, no, I totally agree. It's it's like you know sorry karen she's right no go on go on (laughs) wait i I think it's the idea of like for me i trying to rationalize like how gatekeeping people think i think it's because they need to feel like they're in control of this thing that they like or that what the thing that they like can never change or that it is only for them so that they know where they stand like rather than seeing it as something wonderful and like you know it's it's that weird thing like it's like with art where you can paint a picture and then someone can look at it and go oh i see it as this and then you're like but i don't see it as that and it's like you can both think the same thing but then for some reason it takes it's away from someone interpretation yeah but then yeah. they're kind of like oh no no if my if my answer is not the right answer then uh, there's something wrong with me here and it's just like well no that's the thing I mean that's the thing it's like obviously I joke about it but I'm not a fan of Discovery but it's the idea of I think it's wonderful that we have so many people that are passionate about Discovery who are massive fans of it and stuff and it's great that we have it as a show uh, because of you know like you're saying 
the 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 reboots, the additional modern series and stuff have brought so many people into Trek. And if that means that they get into the older stuff as part of that as well, or if they just go, oh, this is a bit crap and a bit boring, I don't like it, then fair play, stay with the Abram, Abrams films, stay with uh, Discovery and whatnot. It's that, it's that idea of all gatekeeping does, like we have this in the Warhammer community where you get loads of people who gatekeep and they're like, no, this is the only version of the game you play, this is the only way you play it. And it just goes, all you have done is limit the amount of people you can play with. You know, it's like if you gatekeep with a fandom, you're like, all you've done is minimize the amount of people you can talk to about this because no one wants to fucking you talk limit to your you community. anymore. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's never good. <laughs> I, with me, I grew up with my mother and grandmother being Star Trek fans. Um, I was born in 87. So I was born when TNG started. So when it came... Come on, you're not even that old. Well, I, see, this is it. He's going, oh, I'm old and stuff. And I'm like, I'm older than you, Goodwill. And in game no, years, like, I'm technically the, dead. Way, so... By the way he was reacting, like, <laughs> I, I, I had no idea. By the way he was reacting, I, I don't know, you would have imagined he was, <laughs> I don't know, 20 years older than me or whatever. Like, I'm very... But, like, that reaction is not worthy of someone from 87 regarding like compared to me like i no, I think that's you, get, like... you have no right to complain so 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 <laughs> um i i i was i was born into a family of trekkies per se um and it was it was really weird because i i was in that weird generation where for me the way that the bbc ran uh back in the day you got the next generation like years later yeah. So as I was growing up, I got in on the next generation at the ground floor, but I'd already seen the original series. Like I, I was a fan of Star Trek since I was two and a half years old, apparently, and I used to call it Star mm. Twix and whatever. Um, so I saw the original series, and then I went to the next generation, and then Deep Space Nine, and then Voyager, and then Episode. Mm. So for me, growing up in the 90s and early 2000s, I grew up with Star Trek, and Star Trek, it was not just a TV show, it was a way of life. It was a second family, a second home. So I often say, like, uh, in, in terms of, like, the messages that it, that it put out, that Star Trek has always put out about diversity, inclusion, race, gender, and everything like that, they just were absorbed at a young age. And for the longest time, like, I didn't understand... You know why? Why? Why do you hate the fact that someone wants to be a man or a woman? Why do you hate the fact that two men want a kiss? Why do you do that? Like, I don't get it, and I didn't get it because it's just it's accepted. It's just it is what it is. Because in Star Trek, and even as early as the original series with uh, the episode with Abraham Lincoln, where he says a derogatory term to Uhura and he apologizes, mm. and she goes, "There is no need to apologize. These words don't hurt me." And it's just, mm. you just, it it's so beneath them and it's so beyond, like, so far behind them that it doesn't bother them. And this is why I love Star Trek, because it's just like, it's a future for everyone. It's the hope of tomorrow, but it deals with issues where it doesn't ham fist it and shove it down your throat. It's just like, yeah, yeah, we, we did this and we solved this and we did this and... Yeah, it's fine. Even yeah. daft things like, oh, the common cold. Oh, yeah, we used to call it the common cold, but we cured it ages ago. And um, yeah. now we've got oh, the posh cold. Now we've got, yeah, yeah, COVID plus. <laughs> the the upper then, class cold. It's got a then, monocle. But with, with, with gatekeepers, I didn't encounter it because for me, Star Trek was a very private thing. It was a very insular, singular thing for me. I didn't have friends when I was younger. <laughs> um, so I couldn't share my love of Star Trek with people. So I went to my first convention in 96, and that was just like an awakening for me. <laughs> um, but then, it, you know, embracing it, and when I got the internet 20 years ago, you then see these gatekeepers, and they're just like, ooh, I don't like this episode of Enterprise because the font is a different colour on that panel behind. And you're just like, what? Like, why? But then you get these gatekeepers where... And it, we... The more you research, you're like, 
every iteration of Star Trek has had that negativity gatekeeper. The animated series had it. The oh, Next the, Generation, DS, that, that Voyager, that new that newspaper yeah. article that appears yeah. of the next the Next Generation, where they're like, "Oh, he can't be Captain Kirk. He's not bald." And, oh. But then, and, you, and I'm just like, "This is amazing." <laughs> like, but you, you ask know, this now, is like, well, you ask a large, large majority of Star Trek fans, what is your era? What is the era mm. you most associate with your life and Star Trek? Damn near 90% of them would go, the next generation. Because yeah. it built a world, and it was a world that progressed with the modern times. It, it evolved. And the thing with gatekeeping is... You don't see gatekeeping unless you actively go and look for it, unless you are part of those toxic communities. With me, with the events that happened in The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, I think Deep Space Nine is a very poignant one because a lot of the TNG universe changes and evolves. You roll with it because the world evolves, worlds change. And the whole point of being a better person is you learn to adapt. You learn to embrace new ideas and new things. Um, and then you get those bit, oh, I don't like that because they've got grey uniforms instead of coloured ones. And it's just like, in I the end of the it, day, like, does it, does it, how does it affect you? Like, how, if, if all you have to worry about in your life is... Oh, Cisco's got a goatee now instead of a haircut. Or oh, they've they've changed the way that this is done. If that's all you've got to worry about in your life, your life is not really that bad. It I, it's it's very much the fact of Trek teaches us the three the the three T's, which is Trek teaches tolerance. It's the yeah. idea of how you can be a fan of Star Trek and then still be sort of oh and no, it has to be this way Deep when head. there's yeah, yeah where be a decade and then the fact that there's always like there's characters in trek who are gatekeepers and stuff and we all see how they all you know shut up like the the idea in this ep this episode where we basically have like them going hey this is tradition and stuff like that but even they're going against tradition in order to you know die honorably and it's i think i think oh. we've talked enough about like gatekeeping in trek though but it's the idea of just like how these people do it mm. and yeah, it's like bullies, where bullies are always victims. And with gatekeepers, you have to be like, why are you like this? You know? <laughs> Sorry if there was a brief disconnection there, everybody. Um, the adequate systems has been very inadequate at the YouTube. moment. YouTube? YouTube! Um, but no, it, it's just, we, I, I mean, we, we famously said this since we started doing Trekking Up North, we have had nothing but positivity um, and love from the, the, the Trek family. Um, and we have met some wonderful people like yourself, Nina, like Mark, like on Plan Trek, uh, Joe Dove from Captain's Quadrant, uh, Mike Overton from Clone Star, Sean Ferrick. Um, it's wonderful, wonderful people who just embrace Star Trek for what it is, love Star Trek, and just they don't gatekeep, they just embrace Star Trek. And yes, some Trek is better than other Trek. We, you will be a fool to say that every single episode of Star Trek is brilliant. There are weak ones. We mm. all know that. It's about understanding and the. But hate... we can enjoy the weak ones, you know. It's yeah. A, it's like with it's like yeah. with Discovery. And... All of my complaints about Discovery, someone is going to be watching it, being like, "Oh, I love it. It's absolutely yeah. what I want." Yeah. And, stuff. and they and like we never have a yeah, we we they, had yeah. such a laugh doing Candle Slag about how terrible that fucking episode is, and you're like, hang on, the that sets episode were nice, terrible, but it brought us joy getting to take the piss yeah. out of it, getting to dress up, and getting to make a, an event of it. You know, someone's, it's... someone's favorite Star Trek is the one that you don't like, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. like I will watch till the day I pop my clogs tomorrow. I will watch <laughs> Star Trek until the day I die. I will watch every iteration of Star Trek until the day I die. I'm, and that is it, because my love for Star Trek is unerring, it is unwavering, and it is a world that, since I was a little boy, in a little, little See you town, later, Mark. Have a great night. See you later, Mark. In a little, mm -hmm. bo you know, a little boy in a little town that I dreamt of being in. All Trek is good Trek. We can agree to disagree in fandoms, as our Queen says on the Nerdy Up North podcast. Um, but gatekeeping, gatekeepers, get in the sea. <laughs>
Yeah, I think we could sort of. No, I agree. And, with that. and I mean, there was something that Nana said. Uh, uh, was it Nana? I think, which I think was very wise. Which is, um, it may not be your track, but it is someone else's. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And I think that sums up the entire new track is not track discourse. Like you are allowed not to like it, as it goes with everything in this life. Everyone has different tastes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you are allowed not to watch it. You are allowed not to like it. You are allowed to have an opinion. But you are not allowed to bash someone who mm. finds joy through watching that. Yeah. Just because you don't. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Like I say, I'm not a fan and of I... Discovery. The new season has started. I'm not watching it immediately. I will catch up on it in time. But I'm overjoyed that there are that there are people who have been waiting for this, who are finally getting this and but the problem is there's going to be dickhead gatekeepers making youtube videos about how bad it is and wasting like an hour editing videos being like oh look at all the silly things that happen and you're just going like you know what you could do instead you could just enjoy the trek you do like you know you could just sit down and be reviewing a particularly good episode of or, or you could go guess. out and take a walk touch some grass and just let people enjoy <laughs> what they like <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Outside, die in a field. Outside but, you know, with other humans, humans, humans. You know, socialize. It's very healthy. <laughs> oh no, she said but, the okay. S word. No, no, but to go no. Back, to go back to the episode because we've got to round this off. Uh, it's the idea of like this. I what well, we've talked about how good this episode is. We've talked about like everything that happens in it. What are the critiques we have of this episode? Are there any? No. I've got I've got a few, obviously, spoiler alert. I think the 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 only critique I have is that the preparation was longer than the execution. And that mm. the episode when I because I had a look at the time code and when they actually get to the compound, there's like twelve minutes left. I think yeah. that they needed to flesh that part out and how they got into the comp because like I said it looked extremely easy to get into the yeah. compound. I think they needed to flesh that out and really expose the fact that these aging warriors are elderly and they are not as agile as they used to be. I think my only critique would be that there was an unbalance between preparation and execution. So I think it could have been mm. 20, 25 for preparation and then the rest of the episode was the the compound and how they fought their way through because we see oh there's 40 men right i see three so <laughs> do you know what i mean and they it's had just, three of those helmets well that starship troopers was filming so they um budgeting yeah budgeting um the true so, villain of this episode but they but it, it's it not the albino at all the 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 actual mission could have been uh showcased a lot better that would be my only critique anyway no, I think that's true. No, I, mean, I do. It is crazy. We don't see the albino until 35 minutes into a 50 and minute episode. And then he has a chicken on his nuts. head. <laughs> Again, <then he's, laughs> we couldn't even get this man fucking hair. <laughs> Where's the Imagine, budget? see, once again, the budget. Imagine my confusion when I first watched that episode. No, but it did, like, there's a lot. I agree with what Goodwill is saying here. Like, there's a lot, like, the backstory and why they're doing what they're doing and who they're doing it to and then the entire action of it is like i don't know a total of seven minutes yeah which does feel very rushed that's and so yeah i would agree that would be my only critique as well i mean i kind of i kind of love it though that it does that because obviously the problem i have with a lot of modern trek is the fact that it's like hey action 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 oh we'll do the talking bits later and this is the exact opposite bit where they're like oh yeah we're meant to have a fucking battle aren't we oh well we'll just, we'll just... <laughs> We'll just hint towards it, you know, they just get into the compound and there's only three guys there. You know, and it kind of is like, this is the total opposite of like sort of J.J. Abrams kind of thing. Uh, but it is, it's very much that top heavy. Like the fact that you don't see, I think the albino would have been more of a threat had he been alluded to or we saw something of him earlier. We don't yeah. even know what he looks like until <laughs> the scene before he dies, basically. Uh and I think it would have been good to just go, here's a picture of him. Look, he's an angry bastard. Why is there a chicken on I guess, on his to be head? fair, the focus of the episode is on the stories surrounding the alb albino. He is a, he is a, a MacGuffin, is it? You know, like he is yeah. a, he is a plot device, not an actual fleshed yeah. out villain. 
but it would have been nice to have him feel like an actual threat rather than yeah Here's yeah a thing that we need to do you know yeah yeah I like that. Here's a side quest <laughs> yeah that's it it felt very much like that there's some bloody farmer giving them like five gold pieces and being like oh <laughs> here's some boots of warding <laughs> are we are we happy with the episode though yes. i think it's brilliant i it, i love it yeah i agree I agree. I am very happy with it. And I it's, think it's, that... It's wonderful. It's a Dax episode. It's a yep. wonderful Klingon episode. We have all these characters back. And it's great seeing how they've evolved. Like, when we... Because Kor is the most interesting one out of them. Because Kor is a very nuanced character in this. Like, Kang... Mm -hmm. Kang is pretty much how he is in Trek. He How yeah. he is in the original series. He doesn't seem to have changed that much. Koloff, I can barely remember, as we as touched on <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Whoops. Um, but, yeah... Although hilariously, I thought while watching this that Koloff, the actor playing him, was the same one who's a very famous English voice actor, well, American voice actor, who does like things like the Diablo series of games and whatnot, because it sounds incredibly similar. But it's not. I googled it, and it's totally not. He was so, the yeah. original Q. I know, but... <laughs> that, that's but it's this cool. idea of... I I love... Yeah, but I, I love that, but it's... With Kor, we have it where in the original series, he's the first Klingon to kind of make peace with the Federation. Because the fact is, it, you know, it kind of has the episode where, you know, fucking Kirk embarrasses himself again, as usual, in another, yay, meeting another civilization and forcing our culture on them and then getting shown that I'm a dickhead. Uh, you know, but then, like, basically, and then. And obviously the core gets embarrassed by it and they both kind of laugh about it being like, oh, well, we can't really hurt each other because they've got these rules in place. And, uh, oh, I guess we should just get on. And it's this weird little rapport where Kling core goes from a bloodthirsty Klingon who's going to murder everyone to kind of likable in one episode. And then the next time we see him properly, he's just an old guy who likes his drink, likes his booze and has... Well, likes his drink, likes his boozy, likes his women, but has a kind of dark side where we have the scene in Quarks where he kind of goes, I am old. Like, you know, where he's he's realizing that he's, he's aware old. of his. Yeah. yeah. And it's and it's kind of showing why him and Koloff, as well as Kang, would be up for just dying because they're like, hey, we're past it now. We can't do these things. And obviously Kang is not lying to himself. Kor still thinks he's got it. You know, he's reliving the battles in the Hollow Suites. He's living in the past and whatnot, and he's distracting himself with this, and Koloff just doesn't seem to have a personality. But, you know... It, and it, I think it's great, though, that we get that to these characters. Like, they come back, they're fleshed out more, and we get to see more of Kor later, you know? Yeah. Sorry, big yeah. rant there. Big no, no, I, 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 no, no. We, we, no, but it's true, though. Yeah, we love a Sunoy's tangent, and it is a great way to <laughs> sum up our uh, review of uh, Blood Oath. However, however, I am receiving an incoming transmission. Incoming transmission. This is where I remember that I didn't actually put the original series back in. Sorry, I've been busy. <laughs> you I was meant to put the original series, the animated series in. It's not in there, guys. Sorry. son of a bitch. <laughs> This was it's a literally two lines point. of code to fix. Actually, I could fix it right now. No, 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 no because I know what you will do. <laughs> I know what you will do. You will oh, put in that. Just... No, don't you dare. Oh. Don't you even dare. <laughs> don't. Code of honor. Right, okay. You bitch. <laughs> right. Welcome. One day, goodwill. One day. Never. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. To the Dabble Wheel of Episodes! Double. If this is your first time watching Trek It Up North, why? This <laughs> is, this has every episode of Star Trek in existence programmed into it, except the ones that this dude has taken out. <laughs> So this did, has did he take him out? This this has every episode of Code of Honor programmed into <laughs> And the imagine rules are that. No, I don't want to imagine that. That is my nightmare. <laughs> the rules are we predict what the episode is going to be. We spin the double wheel. We get immense anxiety. We sweat. Your chest starts <laughs> to, to ache. Mom's spaghetti. 
And then when it lands on whatever episode it is, we yell at the top of our lungs and we type at the top of our fingers, Dabo! And then we cry into a heap of goo as we realise that the episode is either shit or the episode is good. So, as ever, going first, I'm going to ask. Science Officer Sinoise, stop programming the wheel. No, I was, I was Googling the episode that I want because I, I messaged you the other day because basically I, I what did I watch? Oh, I basically, I, I, I just kept watching from, you know, the DS9 episode we recently did, like the season seven one. Yeah. No, was it? Oh, no, that was season seven of Next Gen. But basically, I was watching towards the end of DS9 and came across and came into an episode that was so amazing. And I was like, and I messaged you just being like, this is genius. Like the what this episode manages to do, which is the season seven episode 22, Tacking into the Wind. Uh and it's absolutely amazing. It's literally, it's the episode where Gowron gets defeated and Martok becomes the head of the Klingon Empire. I was saying to Goodwill that this is an episode that has no filler whatsoever. And it's insane to think that a series could be this good that you can have an episode with so many moving parts mm -hmm. coming together and then moving aside in one thing. We, we literally have Kira... Kira and Garrick and Damar leading the underground uh, resistance against Cardassia. We've got um, Wayun and the uh, the female changeling. We've got Bashir and O'Brien talking about how they're going to save Odo. We've got Odo dying. Uh, it's just there is so much to talk about in one episode, and it's mm -hmm. genius. Obviously, if it was your first episode of DS9, you'd probably be like, what the hell is going on? But yeah, I just, I was just, this is so good that I really want this to appear so that I can talk about it, you know? But yeah, yeah. so it's that one. But obviously Code of Honor as well. Nina, what would you like to see us review next week? I I do love my DS9. <laughs> good. And uh, probably well. one of my favorite episodes is Bada Bing Bada Bang. <gasps> Ooh, I like it. I like it. Yes. It'll be a fun right. one, like. For me, I kind of want another DS9 episode. But, and this is a big but, like me. Uh, and, and you cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. <laughs> I need I it. Knew it. <laughs> I need it. I've I, got I... faith of the heart. Every, every Star Trek Enterprise episode that we land on, I will sing the theme tune from season one and two. Not season three and four, because fuck tambourines. I will <laughs> sing it. I will sing it with gusto and passion. I want either a season one Enterprise episode. In fact, I'd even go as far to say as the pilot. Or I want a season four episode of Enterprise where Enterprise was getting its second wind before those mm. bastards at Paramount cancelled them. Um, and also Trips Tips. Uh, so yeah, for me, it's going to be Star Trek Enterprise. So without further mm. ado, it is time to spin the Dabble Wheel. And is everyone game... ready in the chat? I Are hope you you're ready all ready. Don't forget, yell at the top of your lungs and type it at the top of your caps lock. And everyone who is with me, you two, shout. <laughs> d d d sorry, schizophrenia is kicking in. Shout Dabo. shout, Dabo at the top of your lungs. So in three, in two, in one, anxiety is kicking in. <laughs> I have to review this in LA. Or oh, dear doctor, actually. Oh, dear doctor. Oh, double! Oh. Yes! <laughs> what is, which one is this? Vox voice? Vox solo. Yes! Oh, I can't read it for me. Sorry, okay. Yes, we've got an enterprise. You've got your wish, Goodwill. Mm. Have you got faith of the heart? You know it's really fucking funny. That's I'm why tell he you. got Enterprise. 
You know what's really <laughs> fucking funny, and I will tell you this. Right. Oh my god. 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 Nina, turn around. This is important. Oh my god. <laughs> Hold on, I'm this... fine. Don't you turn your back to me, Nina. <laughs> I've, been, I've been trying to I've been trying to lure the cat in all all like for the past twenty minutes. That's why I kept looking back. Because I wanted to have you. her on my arms when I said Dabo, but she Dabo. didn't listen. Isaac. Hi, Scarlet. Isaac, <laughs> unplanned trek. Good point. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Next week. <laughs> next week. I am in Los Angeles. Okay. <laughs> oh god. Not only am I am I <laughs> not only am I in Los Angeles. I am with Mark at the Shuttle Pod Studios making delicious content. <laughs> I am going to be live from Shuttle Pod HQ reviewing season 1 episode 22 Vox Sola which has been memed which features <laughs> frosted tips and the word <laughs> semen gets thrown around quite a lot. The synopsis for <laughs> Star Trek Enterprise Season 1, Episode 2. <clears throat> Hoshi desperately tries to communicate with a symbiotic alien creature that captures crew members, including Archer and Trip, and cocoons them in its white web and bonds with them. Wow. This has Does got... Does it buy him a drink first? This has got... This has got Fear for the Heart. This has got Frosted Tips. This has got Connor Trinia. This has got very suspicious looking white goo. <laughs> and. <laughs> Tastes like jism. And very, very suggestive Foley work. <laughs> In regards to the noises that it makes. Okay. I am going to have to pack my NX01 cap. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, you were taking oh, you it anyway, Goodwill. Oh, I was. You were taking it oh, anyway. Oh, I was. You know me so well. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so excited. Oh. I am so excited. Is the cat excited, Nina? Is the cat excited? At Are you excited, Scarlet? I prefer Star Trek Lower Decks. <laughs> I just want She's to kill again, She's kind of done with mother. my OBS. What's okay, that, see. Kitty? What's that, Kitty? Moopsie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to let you go because she hates me right now. Oh, Don't get caught on my headphones, though. Jesus. What's that, Scarlet? Keiko is Lord. Hmm. All hail Keiko. <laughs> Computer. All hail Keiko. Computer. Lord of the universe. Computer! Computer? Hello, computer. Yeah, computer. Just stroke it. Computer. Computer. Bye. Oh, Transfer uh, all power to the main screen. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You do realise that's just shut off life support for the rest of the ship. Good. So <laughs> the... we're damned. <laughs> more, co oh, well. more cocktails they went... for the... more cocktails for the captain. The <laughs> um wow, I, I'm just looking, right. What's so funny? What is so funny? There is a YouTube video that is 17 minutes and 27 seconds long. And it's got a picture from Vox Solo with the title, How Did This Happen? <laughs> <laughs> Star Trek's oh, most unfortunate word. creature design. What's guessing that it's semen? So, <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Right, okay. Oh, there's so much goo in these images. I, I'm, I'm very pleased as well, because how are we going to do next Friday? Are we going to do it live? Or is that going to be difficult for you in LA? It's never difficult for me. Next week. I mean, it's it's only one thirty p.m. right now in LA. Yeah, so eleven thirty p.m. Okay, uh, with time zones. Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. So next week, live from Burbank in a random dental office in Burbank in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. California. Captain Goodwill on his travels. Might not be in uniform. We'll see will be live from the Shuttlepod Studios for a Trekking Up North, Trekking Goals West episode. Um, I should plaster that, shouldn't I, on the title? Trekking Goals West. Um, 
it will truly be an international conglomeration of hosts as Saint Officer Sinoise will be in Sunderland, United Kingdom. I will be in California, getting burnt because I'm ginger. Um, and we will review Vox. May the may so. the tips protect you. May the may the t- <laughs> may the candle slag <laughs> light my way, and may the great koala save me. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to get Mark on this. I am definitely going to get it. There is so oh, much. Oh, to love it. There is so much enterprise theme stuff uh, that are going that is going to occur next week as well. I'm quite looking forward to it. So yes, Nina. What do yes. people need to do to donate to you jumping out of a plane with a parachute? Uh, click on the link that will be, I take it, added to the description below. Added. It's already <laughs> there. Scroll down. Don't look at our faces. Scroll down. Oh. And I mean, there's... I, What's I, that link I, doing I, there? <laughs> no, yeah, that's... like, no, thank you so much for, for letting me share it with the world. When, um, uh, when is the dive going to happen? I think somewhere in September, like sometime so in September. We will Exciting. keep. We will keep this link on every description until she jumps out the pit. 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 The oh pain, my god! The pain. Okay, don't jinx it. Aircraft. <laughs> the Boeing seven three seven. Did you say Boeing or Boeing? Because Boeing is quite apt. Boeing. Well, that's because we've got the trampoline. Because we'll be there at the bottom of the hang trampoline. On, hang on, hang on. I'm just, I'm just checking something. Okay, I'm flying to LA on a Boeing. So if I am alive <laughs> this time next week, uh, I will be live from the Shuttlepod Studio. <laughs> um, but yeah, please, 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 please donate to Nina's GoFundMe so she can get a parachute to jump out of the aircraft uh, and land safely on the trampoline. And maybe if I sleep at fifty. Euro bill to the pilot, they may go up. Yes. Above yeah. 10,000 feet. Him, you never know. I will give him a cocktail so he can go high. Can you take me high? Science yeah. Officer Sinois. Yep. Drag Idol. Has it oh, concluded? yeah, that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? Like, it's. Yeah, viewers, this is crazy. Uh, there is so much happening for me this year, and it's wonderful, but it's crazy. Um, but uh, we've got to—I've got a lot of stuff happening, so I'm going to be asking for your your care, your attention, your moolah later in the year for charity. Give him you money, you fucks. But, be- but before then, because I'm basically one of the competitors for Ed. Uh, yeah, Mixed Drag Great Britain 2024, which is a countrywide drag competition. Uh, and I'm one of the finalists. And as part of the final, uh, the competition, we basically have to raise money for charity. And I'm currently coming up with so many insane ideas for how to make money. I am incredibly pleased with myself because they're all batshit crazy. Uh, so I have a lot of plates spinning at the moment to make this happen. But that will be happening later in May, I think, when we start kicking all of that off. However, uh on the 26th, I'm doing, I'm actually helping a friend out, one of the other competitors. I'm uh, helping them out by performing at one of their fundraisers. So we won't be live on the 26th, but on the 19th, we will be, li- I will be live. I will be in a different location because immediately after that, me and my best mate Ian are going to be doing another 24 hour gaming stream in support of uh, St. Benedict's Hospice, which is the wonderful hospice that uh, cared for our friend Beth before she passed away from cancer last year. So, yeah, we're going to try and raise as much money as possible. Uh, Please keep an eye on our socials, on the Nerdy Up North socials, on the Discord that we have for Trekking Up North and Nerdy Up North. Uh, And we will be informing you how to do that. But effectively, if you tune in for the episode on the 19th of this month, immediately afterwards, you'll be able to join the 24-hour gaming stream where me and Ian will be playing lots of silly games. There will be join-in community games like Quiplash and all those Jackbox kind of games where we can be as aff- as offensive as possible. Uh, and there will be a GoFundMe account for that if you can spare a couple of pence. couple of pence. Maybe a couple of pounds. Just maybe a dollar two or two. Pound, just maybe, two pounds maybe. a month can keep sonoising Just two pounds a month, you can, you can make me. I don't even need to jump out of a plane. I'm just going to play some video games. 
You can even donate a pineapple if you can squeeze it into your computer and have it travel to us through the internet. Can I donate I think that's how it coins? Works. How to donate? <laughs> how can donate? Uh, yeah. But yeah, so that's happening on the 19th. So please join us for whatever our episode is then and uh, join us after for the 24-hour streaming. That'd I, be great. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to be, but it's probably going to be Code of Honor because he hates me. So, like I said, there <laughs> is a lot... Re- the urge to fix the actual Dabo wheel. Like, the fact of just being like, it is so incredibly you. easy yes, to but do. Again, but again, I am, I am sharing an aircraft with you. We are sharing the same hotel. I am <laughs> driving you in L.A. In L.A., You in can Las crash Vegas. that car anytime. No, no, no. No, fine. no, no. I ain't crashing the car. I'm driving out <laughs> to the fucking Mojave, and I am going to leave you. <laughs> Okay, you will be a fucking prune by the end of the day. Okay, science officer the... grape. That's what you are going to be. But I am just an egg. Worf will want to drink your essence. <laughs> wow. And what a way to. Is that what he calls it? Uh, well, Vox this has been a fun well, episode, it. though. It, but is, it, yeah, it has really so... been a fun. I would, I would like to thank uh, the wonderful, the lovely, the terrified Nina for unchaining me from the radiator. Unchained Radiator is my less successful cover of Unchained Melody from Ghost, uh, coming soon to a cassette deck near you. Um, But no, seriously, Nina, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much for coming on Trekking Up North. You will be back. There is no choice. Do not resist. That sounds like a threat. (laughs) It is a threat. I've signed my fate now. No, um, thank you for having me. This the, uh, the has continue. been absolutely brilliant. I, I've had so much fun. I was terrified. I was like, Mark texted me. I, I, I was telling Goodwill. He was literally, are you ready to break the internet? And I was like, I'm terrified. <laughs> so I, think- I was I was terrified. I was excited and terrified equal parts. But uh, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. I'm trying to remember what I actually said to you because I do believe it was a direct threat. Let me just have a... <laughs> <laughs> but it's been it's been wonderful having you, Nina. It's like especially since like I'm not really that involved in a lot of the you know the online community and stuff. So it's wonderful having a proper interaction with you at last. I think after <laughs> you've been so wonderful and supportive of this, because obviously I'm supportive of all the shows that you support, but I'm not the face, in any of the, the face behind the psycho online. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's a, I I didn't that's, threaten. That's you. just goodwill. I didn't. Threaten no, you. he didn't threaten me. It was so funny because it was right after last week's episode that. Uh, the devil will came up with the DS9 episode, and then for the past couple of weeks or so, whenever deep we were in chat, we had this deep space Nina thing going on that kind of <laughs> became a thing and an inside joke. And the episode ended, whatever, and I was just chilling. And next thing I know, my notifications went off, and it was a, a message from Goodwill going, <laughs> "You are coming on, don't resist." Um... Yeah, so... But, uh, no, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on, and you will be back again. Uh, you are contractually obliged. So, nice, we will talk. But, I um, might be back. You might Maybe. be back, I don't know. It depends what gutter I find you in next week. We can fish you out and... <laughs> Hopefully Lee's. <laughs> you want a brown egg, Lee? <laughs> That is a random in joke, Nina. Don't worry about it. Has that actually came up? Is that only is that relegated only to the Nerdy Up North podcast? The brown yeah. egg. Where, where yeah, Lee other... trying to get brown eggs. I was there. I was in person. And I was I there. Don't, I don't even get it. All I remember <laughs> from that day is having horrendous food poisoning. The one day I enter Sunderland and it tries to murder me with sausage. So, but yeah, I don't understand the brown. I, I can think of worse days. But Moving enough on. about your weekend. Let's. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you're not twitching or anything like that after this episode? No, I was going to, but I found out tomorrow I have to get into drag three times. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> one of the one of the merch things I've got going on, basically the. The, the guy who can do a certain kind of merch for me and, uh, you know, it's a massive help. Basically, he's going, oh, well, in exchange for that, I want to have photos of you for my, uh, you know, in drag for my uh, uni project. 
and therefore I'm like, okay, cool, we'll do this thing. So we're going to do this photo shoot for him in order to get the thing I want. So this wonderful little mutual trade-off thing. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess my relaxing Saturday's not happening, but yeah. Um, not relaxing anymore. <laughs> no. But that's it. But but the fact is, if it gets these plates spinning for my fundraising later in the year, because I'm hoping that everyone is going to be very happy with what we pull yes. off. Uh, yeah, it's worth it. I'm going to get my tips refrosted. No. So I'm going to I'm going to look peak 2002, um, <laughs> which is when Nina was two years old. Um, so yeah. Uh... <laughs> Well, I was three by the end of it because I'm, oh. I'm a December baby. <laughs> right, this has been <laughs> this has been trekking up north. If you liked this episode, why live long mm. and prosper, long legs and perspire? Um, if you like this episode, give us a like. If you are not a subscriber to another up north channel, what is wrong with you? Click <laughs> that subscribe button. Caress the bell. Cool. Ooh, caress the bell, ding a ling. Give it some love. Give it yeah. some love <clears throat> and hit that like button with all your might. Not the thumbs down, the thumbs up, Lee. Hit it with all your might. We have so many great things going on. We have got Monsters Up North. We have got Gaming Up North. We have got Twitch. We have got Gigs Up North with the delicious General mm. Kirky. We have many, many, many other things and this little pokey thing called the Nerdy Up North what? podcast that no one listens to anyway. Well, we're I, I'm, on, I'm on that, aren't I, on Sunday? Where what we're are you doing on the movie, Sunday? The movie Batman Returns, which oh. will be at 7.30 GMT. I think that is what it's called. That sounds like a drug. Um... So if yeah. you want to watch something decent, Dancing on Ice will be on ITV. And, uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Otherwise, watch us on YouTube. Yeah. Watch us on that YouTube. We will all be there. Thank you so much to all of our live chatters today for joining us. If you liked Blood Oath, leave us a comment below. Tell us what you liked about it. If you didn't like it, leave us a comment below. If you've got questions about Sinoise's Tash, leave us a comment. But please don't use certain words. If you I gave him the idea. That's if all you I'm want about Nina back tash. on Trekking Up North, let us know in the comments below. If you think she is a surgically altered Cardassian, which we believe she is, leave us a comment <laughs> below. But <laughs> until next time, my lovelies, live long and prosper, long legs and perspire. Stay safe, everybody. God, I hope I get to LA and then be able to continue to do whatever this <laughs> is but no seriously stay safe everybody we love you all take care and as always miles 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 mark